Hey, welcome. The Rock Fantasy Files is back. It's kind of like our se fall season or whatever. Like we're like big media now. We got we got the fall season and uh, got some of the regulars back in the house tonight. And uh, this was an episode that actually put by by my old friend and uh, former employee, longtime employee of Rock Fantasy here in Middletown, New York, uh, Steve Levin. He wanted to get an episode together where we get some musicians and we're going to talk about guitars. I'm not going to because I don't play guitar and I don't have any guitars. So, but anyhow, I wanted to come on and introduce, you know, and not introduce, but, you know, start up the show. And I sound like a, knuck a knucklehead, but uh, welcome everyone to Rock Fantasy Files. And Steve Levin, I'm going to throw it over to you and maybe introduce the guests that you put together and uh, I'll sit and sink it in for a little while. Okay. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, we're going to call this uh, the guitar porn episode. And uh, as Denny had said, uh, this is kind of Eric uh, Eric Myers' fault because uh, when we had him on, we were discussing Dark Angel. He showed off some of those beautiful guitars, and uh, Jed was on that episode. And uh, I could see all those beautiful guitars behind him. And I had actually said to Denny, "Please, you know, see if he can get Jed." So, uh, you know, uh, what we're going to do is everybody's going to show off a couple of their uh, guitars, and uh, we'll uh, do a circle. Everybody will show off one guitar, and then they can show off the second one, and. Uh, just uh, the origin of the guitar, maybe when you got it, where you got it from, and uh, maybe any uh, stories surrounding it, if you recorded on the guitar, any special shows, or a uh, way that you acquired it. So uh, today we have uh, my good buddy, my brother from up north, Sasquatch, Denny Barth, who is from Aggression. We have uh, Brad Mater, currently of Must Not Kill down in Florida, killing it down there. We have my good friend, Alex Books who is playing in Immolation right now, absolutely destroying it, did some shows this weekend. We have uh, Jesse Jardine, who is my new buddy from Witch's Hammer. It's good to Malt, meet you, Jesse. Also Thank in Assimilation, you. too, my main band. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless yes. plug, because we're young and no one cares about <laughs> No, please do, please do, man. In my <laughs> ignorance of not uh, mentioning it. So we have oh, Jed Simon, currently of Zimmer's Hole, Mr. Canadian Metal, we'll call him. Look at all those <laughs> guitars. <laughs> And the surprise, look, we have my uh, my good friend, Eric Meyer, who is uh, from Dark Angel, and he is uh, part of the reason we're having this episode. Uh, of course, we have Steve Keeler here, who is the main man, and uh, my good friend, John McEntee, who is, uh, oh, we don't oh. even have to say, he's from Incantation, and I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, hopefully, one of those old Mockingbirds. Oh. Uh, Fuck uh, yes. Uh, it's... Oh. Uh, <laughs> Let's Come on, that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> Good. Do we have volunteers to go first, or am I just going to pick somebody? Pick, man. Steve, just one second before you start. It's, sure. did you, uh, now, is Chris Caffrey possibly joining us? Yeah, Chris Caffrey's supposed to pop in. He uh, okay. had to do he has wow. a deadline of Friday of uh, oh, okay. vocals, and so he had to be in the studio. But at some point, he is supposed to stop yeah, in. Get he just gave me the thumbs up, so we're going to have uh, Mr. That's Sabotage all. and we'll really CSO. Looking he should show so, up. Yeah, whenever and, he shows up, we're going to just... It'll uh, be like a drive-by. Drive -by. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. <laughs> we're just going to let him corrupt and uh, tell his, uh, share his story so he can get back to recording, and then whoever's speaking at the time can just get back to it. Uh, so we're just uh, lucky that he pops in and shares some of those incredible stories, because uh, <clears throat> some of them are just mind-blowing. All right, so uh, I'm just going to pick, and uh, let's start off with... Da, 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 da. My new friend Jesse. What up? Hey, <laughs> that works. That works perfect because I actually pushed. A, I'm like personal trainer, like with Marco too. I think we might be the only metal band with two personal trainers in the band. But <laughs> so I pushed a client back, so I do have limited time. So awesome, oh, we, awesome we man. Well, first. you know, you can do it whenever you need to, brother. Right on, right on. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just grab the grab the main axe. Um, so this is. This is my baby. I've never really needed anything else. It's a DBZ by Dean Zielinski. Uh, you can't get these anymore. Uh, you know, you can tell it's a total Dean headstock, right? But uh, yeah, ever since I got this, like I've just, you know, I have my backup guitar, but I've never ever seen a cooler guitar just for, you know, I grew up in the 90s in the age of comic books. Like this looks like something, you know, like long haired Tony Stark, Iron Man or Spawn would play or some shit, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> So, but yeah, I've had this thing for like 12 years. It's been to Europe and back and wherever else. And yeah. But yeah, I got it. I got some work done on it. Used to have a, 
used to have the jack down here, which sucked. And I got it replaced to the outside and uh, did a bit of work in the back to get some more springs in there. But yeah. Other Holy than that, spring party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know. That is beautiful. That's shady. Place, it plays like a dream, though. Yeah, I've never, you know, I'll probably never get a new one. I almost bought a second one, but I thought that might have been a bit overkill. But yeah, I just, uh, it was a Christmas present when I was 21 and moved out here alone from my parents. And uh, I can't, I was working as a video editor at the, at the time for a video game show. And they actually brought it in and kind of put it down in front of everybody. Everyone gathered around. It was pretty cool. But that's pretty much the story behind that thing. The red bastard. That's a great story, though. <laughs> you know, I love the delivery yeah. of it. That's great. Yeah. Man, all those guitars came out, man. I thought those things were gonna fucking just take off. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. model and the V shape that came out. I thought those were just gonna hit like a mother. I know. Like it, it took me a long time to hunt that one down. Like I had to order it. I'm pretty sure I got it off like off like eBay because there's the version twos and they just look bad. They have like gold electronics and all like gold and it's yeah. like a, hey it's like a, it's like a bright hey yeah <laughs> i don't mind gold but gold with gold with bright red uh, like iron like man grill for cool, the but i don't want to play car. iron man you know it didn't seem to take off as much as i i thought those fuckers were gonna blow up yeah yeah, yeah i did i did too i did too yeah. i think the <laughs> problem with those is that uh Zelensky was in bed with diamond amps and i think there was a little power play Ooh. with that Ooh. And um, they were doing I, I had a little insight on that, you know, and it's okay. like it was. I think that's why it kind of ended up tanking. I know Zelensky's doing his own thing out in Chicago. He does like a private stash thing. Yeah. And uh, but he doesn't do any of those models. I don't know why, but he has like more like you know, more like a convention, conventional type body much style. When it comes nothing to like that. If it ain't sharp, I don't want it. Right. <laughs> if you can't kill yourself with it or someone else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Sanders That's all I had on it. Down on that one. Big spike on it. <laughs> Needs to have an edge to shave somebody's head off, right? Exactly. You know, they get too close. Yeah, man. Give him one. No. Just one. Like, yeah, that's maybe two. <laughs> give him one. Give him two. Maybe three. Yeah, maybe two. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. What kind? What kind of trem was on it? Uh, I think it's got EMG. Yeah, it's got EMGs in it. So it's active. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's got the EMGs. Just I just left them in. They've been in there a long time, just like stock. I actually, uh, this, I wish I had an original picture of it, but I, you know, I played this for 10 years and the thing was so rusted, you couldn't even get the, the springs back in. So I actually took it apart and got this, uh, it was like rust removing goo and I like left it out overnight and then I just scraped it all off with a toothbrush and then, yeah. uh, uh, cleaned it all with alcohol and then hit it again with uh, uh, WD-40 to kind of loosen everything up. I took in my guitar guy. He put it all back in, did the strings and did all this for a hundred bucks. <clears throat> I have the best guitar guy ever. Nice. Nice. Well, uh, nice. Yeah, a WD bath, uh, WD-40 bath will do wonders for uh, yeah. all that, all that shit. And a Absolutely. Brush, like you said, I did not want to spend like another $500 on like a, on like a, Floyd Rose Bridge if I didn't have to, right? But I was pretty mm -hmm. close to. I'll tell you what works too. If you have a little extra scratch, you get the titanium upgrades, uh the all the 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 yeah. screws and all that yeah. stuff got, really works great, man. Got them, yeah. got them. Fuck yep. yes, that's all I'll say on that. Fuck right. yes. Yeah. Right. Do that and you never have another issue. You don't have any more crack blocks, and you know how that gets. You try to pry yeah, those suckers that out. That shit is for real. Ass. Yeah, that shit is no, real. they're 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 awesome. I need to stop putting all my money into action figures and comic books and probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. How much does that upgrade kit cost? How mm -hmm. much uh you can go with uh I mean depends what you want to get. If you want to get the blocks and the and all the screws and the hardware and stuff. I mean if you if you put all that stuff, I have it on one of mine guitars i'll show them a bit like, here like that full tone shit right yeah. but like all this i mean you're looking at maybe like a you know buck 50 for all that but those are all titanium in there yeah. you, get that, you, get the, you get the full set of titanium screws for like 36 bucks the full set yeah. of titanium blocks the, uh, the titanium blocks the screws are like the biggest upgrade you can do and then and then the and then the full upgrade like the big block you know that's a that's a big thing i went the, for the full bridge i did the full pull on it oh dude oh and wow. uh it's amazing it yeah. added like two pounds to my guitar but it's, oh, wow. it's but a world it, of a difference it, it, though 
it, it's it does. It creates I can't oh, recommend yeah. it enough. I really can't. Yeah. No, everybody should. If you have a Floyd Rose, you should definitely get that. Yeah. Helps with intonation and everything? Everything. It sustain it. It just brings your guitar to life. It, it just adds. It really mass. does. And Jed yeah. knows he, he mass buys equals, it on more guitars. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it works. It does work. So I got a cat bugging me. So I <laughs> love. Great thing. Mine's over my shoulder, back there somewhere. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there but he there he is. Oh, he's sleeping. Nice. Everybody, <laughs> grab your cat. Let's go. <laughs> Which one? Cats I got five. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Well, you better wrangle them up now. <laughs> right, come here, buddy. This is Freddie. Oh, oh nice. Dude, he's nice awesome. Hell right. yeah. Freddie's like, fuck off. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, really? <laughs> All right, hey, Jesse. Buddy. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, bro. Jesse. Killer. I think I've Thank never you. seen one of those before, to be honest with you, man. I've never seen one on stage again, and that's why you know, I want to keep playing it so it's known as mine. So if anyone else takes it, I can be like, yo, come on. Yes, screw you, buddy. Uh, that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Really I'm the same stuff. way, man. Yeah. <laughs> Play something long enough, hopefully someone will notice, I guess, right? That's the right. plan, right? 20 well, years no. after. <laughs> right? That's when people care, right? No one cared about Witch's Hammer till 35 years later, right? That's how it goes these days, I guess. So yeah, I can't right. wait to be famous when I'm 55. Excuse me, what? Great. Stop it. Stop uh, it. Dude. <laughs> you blink at 55. Man. So fast. I got two years <laughs> on that, that even. Hey, I have two years to go, but. No age jokes. Mm-hmm. What's that? I said no age jokes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Got it. I'm not a pop, bro. You okay. guys are over 50? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Old time. If it's any consolation, I'm 31 and my entire body feels fucked at all times. I'm 31. I'm 31 too with 26 years experience. Oh yeah. That Benjamin <laughs> Button. Enough, when I was when I was 31, I felt the exact same way. <laughs> I still go to the gym and lift heavy weights, so I'm fucking with you. So oh, Chris Caffrey. Here we go. All right, guys. We have Chris coming in. Here he comes. Da, 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 da. Welcome, Chris Caffrey. Woo-hoo. Hey, what's up, Chris? How are you, man? I'm good. I. <laughs> it's funny because I knew that this was coming, but ever since I had my freak accident three years ago, my short-term memory is ridiculously bad. And it's like, it's hard to explain. I, I, I can remember shit that happened when I was five, and I can't remember yesterday. So I was getting ready to start. I'm actually, it's pretty funny. I'm actually recording my first ever guest lead vocal track for this project in germany these guys that are metal fans of, of sabotage and they they like my solo material they want me to sing on this metal rock opera thing they're doing so i uh, late like I'm, i always am doing their vocals and they they need them finished by friday so i have to do backgrounds and lead vocals but it's actually pretty cool i rewrote they they sent me a song and i rewrote the lyrics and melodies and and uh it's fun. I, I enjoy singing, so it's, it's not, you know, if I if I didn't play guitar and then become a singer and not have the reputation of being a guitarist, oh, yeah. I would have really enjoyed being a lead singer, oh. but I didn't realize that being trained was something you could do. I thought, like, everybody was born either being Ray Gillen or you couldn't sing, you know? So I when I couldn't <laughs> sing, I didn't realize that it was something you could actually train yourself to do, and, and that... Um, you know, unfortunately, is something that I learned pretty late. It's not like, I mean, enjoy doing my solo records. It's just, if I would have done that when I was 21, I probably would have been in a lot more control of my own career than I am now. But I'll, so I'll I, fucking I, second I, that, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I don't know where you guys are at or what I missed, or, but um, uh, you, where are we going to have you show off two of your favorite guitars? But you can go now if well, you want. I, I was trying to think of that, what to do. And, um, Mm-hmm. I just figured I would do a funny two guitar story because okay. this, this guitar here, it's a Honey Burst Les Paul. And when TSO was playing and, and Joe Walsh was our guest, I don't think, I mean, for some reason, I don't think I ever saw a Honey Burst Les Paul up close. And I love this color. And there was actually a girl that I knew that, um, was trying to, I guess the word was woo me at the time we were doing the TSO Beethoven's last night tour. And 
we were about to leave on that tour and, and I, my house as an Easter present showed up this honey burst Les Paul, which is a really wow. nice guitar. Yeah, so it showed up as an cool. Easter present. And I was so excited about this guitar and we got out to um to Cincinnati to do the the rehearsals the night before the first show because that was the first gig on the tour. And I showed it to Paul O'Neill and he was like, well, it's nice, but I'd rather it be black because Paul liked black and he liked white guitars. That was his thing. He really liked that particular thing, but mostly, you know, that that was the style. So I was like, well, Paul, Al Petrelli plays black Les Pauls and, and that's kind of his thing. And, and I just thought this would be something different. He goes, well, you know, I really would, was hoping that, you know, he would use something that would be black or white on this Beethoven tour. So I said to him, well, I've got a day. I said, if I find myself, because I was using my white Gibson V, my old Karina V on that tour. I said, if I found myself a, a black V, will you buy it for me? And he was like, yes. So I was on a mission the night, I'll be right back before that TSO tour. And there's there's a guitar store in Cincinnati that's over by that place Bogarts. And I forget the name of the guitar store right now because I forget everything. But I went online that night and they had this is like a uh oh man year exactly. Like that. I think it's like an 82 or an 83. Oh yeah. It might be an it's either an 80 or a 90, 82 or 92, but it was it was a black V that and at that point in time, the market was really good for them. And this thing was only 900 bucks at the store. It's, it's, a, it's a Gibson. It's a great guitar. And it. Uh, Does that have the flathead stock on it? Yeah, like it's got the late big, 70s, early 80s. One, yeah, and it's got what was supposed yeah. to be a, a, one of those, uh, what are those little cameras GoPro was supposed to be yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, it was yeah. on for some TSO stuff, and I never took the thing off, but it's kind of stuck on it. But... um. <laughs> I showed him the the picture online at the by the end of that rehearsal and he said go get it. So I got into a taxi cab the next day and I went and ran out to this I forget the name of the guitar store it's a, it's a, a music store out in in Cincinnati that's by Bogarts where we with the club over there it's a really good club and I got this guitar and I brought it back and and brought it in and played it for the uh the very first show that we ever did for TSO on the Beethoven's Last Night Tour. And this has actually become probably my favorite guitar to tour with if I can only bring a single guitar. And when I did the Metal Church Tour, I used this one. And, and it's really, nice. really good with any tuning. If I you know, put a set of 10s or 9s on this, regardless, and, and <laughs> if somebody's a whole step up, a whole step down, this thing never loses its tuning. It's got a D-tuner on it, which is good. And it's just... A really badass metal guitar, and and it's easy to uh, to carry around. And the other thing I like about the V is you don't need a stand. <laughs> you can always just put the flying V on the ground and yeah. lean against anything. So anywhere, I use yeah. this for a lot of the uh, a lot of the Doro stuff, and um, I used it for the Metal Church tour, and I always use it with TSO, and and I always play it now just because it's you know something that Paul had, had bought for me. So it was, um, you know, it's always going to be something that's, that's very special to me for that reason. So he, uh, he'd given me that, that guitar to use because in his opinion, this wasn't cool. <laughs> so I was <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> well, will you, and I was just being kind of funny. I'm like, if you, if I find a black V, will you buy it for me? He goes, yes. So, I mean, but you're also talking, Paul was one of those people where he didn't like, when I first got my Dean guitar endorsement, he hated their headstock. He could not stand the Dean, this headstock. And when I went to the rehearsals we were doing for the tour and I had those guitars, it, it was like a small little, I mean, me and Paul, like a dad and son kind of thing, we we're kind of almost arguing over it because he was talking about how that headstock was, he, he wasn't going to jeopardize a multi-million dollar <laughs> production over a guitarist headstock because i guess he thought people noticed what it was too much so i remember calling up the dean people the next day we were down in florida and i'm like look you guys gotta help me out here i said do you got anything that doesn't doesn't have 
that headstock on it. And that's when they made me, I mean, they, I had that wizard guitar made that had that headstock, but they also made me the Night Castle one, which that's what I'm doing. I'm running, I keep running and getting guitars. Mm. That's when Dean made me this guitar, which had the normal yeah. headstock on top yeah. of it. So this, this was forgiven. So nice. it was pretty funny though. <laughs> Paul was like, at that point in time, he goes, I will send you to Guitar Center. And he like goes in a briefcase and he's got like 40 grand that he hands me. He goes, I will give you this now. Go buy Gibsons. And I'm like, Paul, Paul, let me talk to Dean. So he was like ready to throw me into Guitar Center to replace all my guitars that I just got from Dean with Gibsons just because he didn't like the headstock. So I had gotten this and I think they gave me a, it was like a Dean kind of Les Paul style, but I had an ML that I wasn't allowed to use and a couple other, I had to give back some really nice Deans that I had at that point in time because of that. But uh, it was pretty, this one's a great guitar. It sounds great, it's cool, but it had, this finishes is a, um, a decal. And I don't know if anybody's ever played one of these that has it. It does not like the, uh, the trucks. The is that like a castle that, like against the moon or what? Yeah, it's it's a oh, nice castle thing. That's we pretty tight. Here, so. Reminds me, reminds me of Castlevania. <laughs> but it um, it's cracked. There's cracks in this this um finish you. here. It's not painted. It's like this decal that they have, and they put over, and it doesn't like the hot and cold changes of the uh, the semi trucks into the arenas, and it just throughout the years it keeps cracking more it's like a is it like a yeah. wrap or something that those yeah it's, it's what, i don't know how it now. works exactly i mean it, it is some form of a lacquer and it, the whole thing <laughs> itself cracked it's it's um it is i don't know exactly how it's placed on because the crack is the thing itself so hmm. it's i guess they kind of like dip it in some form and this whole thing goes on at the back hasn't cracked or anything but the front has gone through that weird whatever it is that's happening to it but i mean my it looks finish pretty... on my dean cracked too so <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good, this, 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 is a good this is a great guitar it plays a lot like the uh the old char the old charvels with the maple necks on it this is a this is a this was made by dean himself this one i have a few deans that were made by dean before he went and went to dbz and then i have a few dbz's that were made by dean before he went and formed zelinsky guitars which i have a couple i have a couple zelinskys and it's such a there's such like a a, a family feud going on between all those companies that now it's i actually sure. i think yeah. on this next tso tour that we're doing in november i i uh I've been talking to one of my guys, one of my friends over at Jackson, and I think I might head back over there and bring a, a new Jackson. I'm on that tour. I want to bring, I have some um, old Rhodes guitars that I have. The one Rhodes that I always use is this wood grain one here, as I keep going into multi guitars. But this Rhodes was made for me on the, uh, the Poets and Mad Men tour for Sabotage. And I always use that with TSO. And Dean was supposed to be making me a, um, a match for that, a mate. I mean, not Dean, uh, Jackson was. And what happened was they delayed it. And I'm, I was waiting for this guitar for a tour. They were doing what was supposed to be a darker stain to, to, to match that one with the gold hardware. And it never showed up. They sold it on me to somebody. And then all of a sudden on the tour with TSO, I get a package from Jackson and it's some wood grain Japanese roads with no tremolo. And it was like a $300 rose that they sent that was supposed to replace that other roads that never made it. And I, at that point in time, I was kind of like, well, I even saw Grover Jackson. And I was like, what happened with my roads? And that's when uh, I was out at NAM, and the, and the Dean people said, oh, we would never let that happen to you. So I, I kind of made a switch, but I'm, I'm thinking about bringing um, a few roads that I haven't used for years on this next TSO tour. And, and uh, Jackson wants to drop me with something to take out on that. So it'll be fun. I like to bring new things out on the tour because people like to, to see you with something different, not a ton of different things, but they, when they see you, they like to take photos with the new guitar. So it's kind of fun. The fans like 
kind of seek it out to see what guitar is different on your tour. So and since this year, since we're not doing any of the meet and greets or stuff like that, I wanted to have something on the stage that they could be looking at that's a little bit different since they won't see us after the show. But before I start bringing out 40 other guitars, I just <laughs> I go through that. So. Yeah, cool. Thanks for coming on tonight, Chris. That yeah, was awesome. and, and now I'll go sing. So <laughs> I go sing and uh, thanks for giving us your time tonight. And, uh, no, no, no. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm late. I'm, well, uh, I don't that's know right. late, we whole, I'm just exactly on, how I always you. am, not on time. Uh, <laughs> I'll get you back on in a couple of weeks. We'll do something else. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Right. I'll see you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. it, brother. Zeke. Everybody. So Steve right. Levin. Uh, Who are you going to pick my, next? Time limit? <laughs> no? I like that, that black one. Beat. It's shattered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. I think our, our record is like two hours and 50 minutes, I think. Oh, uh, we might beat it tonight. Well, we'll try to move it along. Uh, <laughs> how about how was, uh with my buddy Johnny Mac down in the corner there. What do you got for us, John? Johnny oh, well, Mac. What I don't have is my white mockingbird, the old ah, one, because I have it over at Kyle's it? house or drummer. I just leave it up there because that's the one I use to like, you know, for band practice and stuff. So uh, I don't have it with me. And it's a bummer because I have the other ones in storage too. So I have a few of them that I kind of jam out here and do some writing on. So gonna have to suffer with some of the uh more lamer ones i guess no uh, there's actually really nice um guitar this is my i showed the, this one on the show before my sp guitar sp yeah man yeah the one that scott Pervonic awesome. did for oh, me scott's doing great work it's, it's a beautiful yeah guitar. it's awesome and he did such an amazing job with it and you know i mean i i helped doing it helped a little bit but he really did all the work i just did a little sanding and a couple things to make it but it's still you nice like a to like top on there, John. Uh, yeah, it's, well, it's, well, like it's like, it has it's like flame. the streamers on there too, you know. Yeah, nice. That's really, flame. Yeah, yeah it's, it's flame maple. Yeah, it's flame maple yeah. with the mahogany wings and uh, yeah, flame maple top. It's real nice. Definitely a really killer guitar. And um, yeah, basically, I just I wanted something that was really similar to, you know, my white mockingbird, and so I couldn't really find it. And Scott offered, you know, to work with me on one. I was like, hell yeah, we'll do, do something like that. You know, I mean, it's not necessarily a mockingbird. It's a tad bit different, but it's pretty much a mockingbird. Uh, it's, nice. it's killer. Man. Yeah, yeah. It's a ki killer. That's and a killer, right? Yeah. It's a killer. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. tell with the, I'm on my phone. It's hard to, oh, I can yeah. see it. That Almost looked like it's the 2320 killer. Yeah. It's really yeah. nice killer. And I got it set up for my thicker gauge strings, you know, put on some um, thicker rollers on it. I just, I've been using Kaler forever, you know, yeah. since, um, you know, being into old Slayer and old Dark Angel, you know, and I have to just stick with it. You know, I, every yeah. time I try to use the Floyd Rose, I, I could use them, but I just don't feel quite as comfortable. You know, Kaler for me is just the, um, you know, the mm -hmm. way to go, you know. Oh, it's what you start on too. Use. Yeah, exactly. You know, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I pretty much, you know, shown this one before, but it's, you know, really nice. I, I yeah, this one, yeah, it has nice. this uh, sigil on there too. It did the little incantation symbol thing yeah, on there. Yeah, you got just, your gauge of strings you put on. Uh, these are base, what is it? These, I, I went down, I used to go 70 to uh, 13, but I went down wow. to uh this one these are 65s now it's just easier to play it was just getting really tough on my wrist you know yeah. trying yeah. to pick fat i mean i like the tension because you tune down to see it's great you know for the tension but it is a little bit too thick you know and um, yeah yeah i know i <laughs> have that problem all the time but uh yeah no nah, but it's um yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's a great guitar. I've been using this a lot for a lot of the recording because we're actually in the middle of doing some recording now, and it's been working great. And I've been uh, using these Fishman pickups that I, um, you know, just started working with lately. Really happy with them too. Um, all of them. All yeah, of it just sound it just sounded great. I mean, um, you know, they sent me some just to try out, and I I played them immediately, and it was just like. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. just it just works, wow. you know. That's I what I like keep hearing. I'm on like ten of my guitars now. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking love them, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. What where I was just, looking for. Yeah, I know. It's 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 nice. 
you know, I just want to play the guitar and I just want it to feel right. You know, I just want it to sound good. Right. I don't, I want to make it like as, as no bullshit as possible. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm pretty hard on my guitars and it's just like, you know, they really need to be quality stuff and just sound good. And um, yeah, I mean, um, I lost my train of thought what I was going to say, but anyway, um, yeah, this is my SP guitar. I would definitely, you know, if anybody, you know, is thinking about getting a custom guitar made, I definitely talked to Scott about it. I mean, he does yeah. some amazing work. I mean, this is, this is, yeah, he does. you know, an amazing guitar. I mean, sounds great, plays great. And I'm just happy because I'm able to get it with the, you know, just a one pickup. I don't have to like do some cover up for this one when I take it out There's and no I just have the volume, the volume, you know, and that's it. Like, I just want, I want to know yeah. bullshit kind of yeah. guitar for playing, you know, for playing live. I, you know, I'm kind of done with as many, um, you know, knobs as possible. I just fix, the, you know, whatever tone, I just do it on the amp, you know, I, the guitar I just want a good sound coming out of it goes to the amp. It sounds fine. At, at least for me, it works that way, you know? Yeah, I dig e it. Easier to better because the more, you know, especially after I'm touring and stuff, things start, you know, the more shit you have, the more problems you have, you know? The more Always. things go wrong, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. But, but, Yo, so I got a, I got to okay. leave like pretty quick here. Should okay, I show okay, my yeah. second guitar before I go or? Yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, do okay. it. Yeah, go ahead. So here's my. I'm, uh, split, I'm splitting two guys. So thank, good to see everyone, and thanks so, for giving your time to the channel. All right, Steve. And Rock, I'll, call you, Steve. Yeah. Man. I'll call you soon, Steve. I don't. I'm leaving, man. Talk to you soon, brother. <laughs> We're all leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> So this isn't my first guitar, but it was my number two. This is my first big boy guitar. It has the worst name of a guitar ever. They're called Jackson Dinkies. <laughs> but, Dinkies uh, are great, man. Fun. Yeah. Uh, I put I played this slide for a long time until I got that one, but I just always really love the finish. Kind of reminds me of Hendrix. And uh, yeah, it's not neck through or nothing. It's bolt on, but still, it got me Good. through. Uh, got me through the early days. Uh, my first Floyd Rose. So. A lot of headaches, a lot of busted strings, a lot of strings hitting me in the eyes trying to do that. I don't do it anymore. I pay a professional to do it because I am, uh, I'm like brain damaged when it comes to gear. So uh, I just get someone who's not to do that and give them money. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just a nice Jackson. It's, it's my backup though. So, uh, I don't play it much anymore, but it's always there. It's always there when, uh, when I need it. Oh, we're live. That's right. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just going to head out. I got a client to train. It's actually the first time I'm, I'm going to see him today. So I pushed him back to do this, that he can take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Jeff. You really appreciate it, brother. That's really cool. It was great. It's awesome meeting. being around. It's awesome being around legends, man. It's fucking, you know, I grew up listening to all your guys' stuff. It's fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, so Witch's Hammer, we got a new album coming out. I think it comes out December. Uh, we just dropped a new track a couple days ago, actually, so. It's a bunch of old material mixed with uh, me and Marco and uh, our bass player kind of writing stuff and working on the third album too. So it's kind of cool. And then, and then once again, my main band assimilation, we got this out. No one heard it or cared. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like death metal, I guess, or whatever. You know? <laughs> cool, but, man. We like death metal. Again, yeah. yeah, we're down. All right. Right Jesse, thanks, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Man. Cheers, All right, guys. Man. Take care, Salut. man. Take care. Thank Salut. you. Cheers. See you, bud. Okay, and we're losing people by the minute. Fuck, Hollywood <laughs> Squares are just looking yeah. fucking <laughs> fucky. John, were you done talking about that sexy beast of a guitar? Well, it's gonna, I was mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I was just going to bring up that the um, the old uh, BC Rico that I have, that I don't have uh, with me, unfortunately. That one, this story behind that was my old guitar teacher had that guitar. He used to play in a band... Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a poser band. They used to play like Death Leopard kind of stuff, some Scorpions, like the eighty Scorpion stuff. And they were pretty good. But he was my guitar teacher at the time. He actually sold the guitar to one of my friends, who's also taken lessons from it. And he didn't like the guitar because the horn kept like sticking into him on the top while he was trying to practice, and it just felt really uncomfortable for him. And I had a an old Ibanez um, Roadstar 2, I think it was, like a, like a total beginner's guitar. And, um, you know, I, I was just like, 
well, you know, I'll trade you for it. I didn't know nothing about guitars. I just know it looked cool. And I, you know, I seen a couple of, you know, people in mag metal dudes in magazines playing on them. I don't remember who they were. I just remember like, Oh, that guitar looks pretty cool. It's like one step closer to something kind of more yeah. metal. And um, yeah, I ended up with that guitar and it just like, it just lasted through hell. I mean, I literally put that guitar through almost all my like lame ass, you know, cover bands trying to learn how to play and, you know, crazy incantors getting thrown, you know, across uh, highways and accidents and just all this stuff happened to it. And the guitar still like sounds great, plays great. It's like, it just feels great. You know, no like buzzing or nothing. It just, it's, a, it's just amazing how, such a, um, you know, great quality guitar could last so long. I mean, you know, it was made probably around in, in 1980 ish or something. And what it's, yeah. I mean, that's what 40, 50 years now, 40 years. That's a, yeah. that's, you know, long time. Guitars, guitars age gracefully, good. man. They age, they age <laughs> gracefully if you take care of them too. I mean, the thing will last a lifetime. Yeah. The thing more. about the thing about it though, for the first like 15 years I had it I really didn't treat it well at all I mean I treated it kind of like my bitch guitar you know I was just like <laughs> I'd play it hard and I'd be tossing it all around and swinging it around just being a total total metal asshole with it you know but somehow it just lasted and like I said it still plays great you know I wish I had it here I'd love to show it but I, I don't you know but anyway maybe that's, for part, it. that's it for now maybe for part two we'll get to see that cool yeah hopefully I'll have to remember yeah, that would be awesome. All right. So that was that was a great guitar, man. I love that. But uh okay, uh moving right along. Uh Eric, do you want to show off something? Sure, man. Um I know I I know we talked about it before, but I think it's this kind of has the most fun story is the one I've been playing recently. And this oh. is actually this is a Washburn V that was a prototype uh V that I picked up off eBay. I got it from Boogie Street Guitars, which I think is uh, kind of a popular Eric. dude. I think the guy's name is Eric or something. Eric McKenna out in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him well. Yeah, but he's been kind of a really cool dude. I just saw it on eBay. It was a prototype for somebody, and um, they made six of them. And it only yeah. cost 1500 bucks. And yeah. so when I saw it, it was an all mahogany guitar with an ebony board, <laughs> and it had EMGs in it already. And it was kind of, you know, it's the more of a classic look. And um, what's fun for me about this guitar is I changed like everything on it myself, which is mm -hmm. kind of when you put the work into it yourself, that kind of makes it a lot more fun. Sure, and yeah. When I, when I first got it, it was a stop tail and it had the EMG pickups and the headstock was different. The headstock, I know I told this before, but it kind of looked like a Gumby. It was this <laughs> like, rounded fucking thing that looked <laughs> really stupid. And, um, you know, it had a turn W on there. And um, I had it for a few years. I mean, it's fuck. I got it like over 10 years ago now. And, um, you know, the, the headstock, I always hated on it. And the, else what was weird about it that I didn't like, it had um, the finish. They like didn't put grain filler in it. It was it was like a matte finish, a matte They're black coming. finish. But you, yeah. could totally, you could totally see the wood grain on yeah. the body. And I always thought that kind of sucked. So just one day I thought I'm going to overhaul this motherfucker. And the first thing I did, I just, I chopped the headstock up and um, I just like did touch up paint and I kind of thought it came out kind of sporty. You know, I just kind of, it's kind of small, but I think it looked kind of wicked the way it kind of came out. I don't even remember how I fucking did it, but it looks kind of sporty, I think. And then yeah, um, nice. the other thing that bugged me about it is it had the input jack was down here, like your classic yeah. bees. And it, yeah. you know, to me, I think that's fucking just terrible. And so I got these harebrained idea where I thought, fuck, I'm gonna put the input jack over here like a Jackson. And so I had that all fucking drilled out. And then as I was doing, and then I thought I'm gonna refinish the motherfucker and I'm gonna do grain filler. And so that was in process. And um, I thought, well, fuck, you know what? I, I remembered seeing somewhere, somebody had put an input jack on the back of a guitar. I saw that somewhere. And I yeah. thought, you know what? That would be the funnest fucking thing to do since I'm just doing extra work for myself. So I bondoed this fucking hole up and uh, <laughs> I routed out the, the jack and I put it in the back and I made it kind of uh, 
it might be kind of hard to see, but I actually made it kind of contoured in. I just fucking routed it out with like yeah, fender style. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I tucked it in actually because like my premise for that was when you have the wireless in there and it's going to loop up the back like you won't even see that the guitar is plugged in that was kind of like my vibe for this yeah and so i did that and then i thought well fuck while i'm ripping shit up why don't i put a battery jack in the back because it didn't Mm. have one of those so i put in the battery compartment and i like made that all flush fitting because i don't think they usually are but they're flush i made it flush and then, um, and then I thought I was all done and I thought, well, fuck, I, and it had a stop tail, like I said. And then I thought, well, fuck, man, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to do this into a Dark Angel guitar, because when I got it, there wasn't any Dark Angel at that time. But I thought, fuck, I should put a Kaler in here. So mm-hmm. I fucking reached out and then like I had to do things fucking over and over, like the finish was done and then I had to fucking rip it out and routed out with a fucking drill and when i put it in i fucked up the spacing so i had to get one of these plates to uh cover up my slot hole that i created (laughs) because that's what they're there for yeah Yeah. i fucked up (laughs) and uh you know i put the floyd nut in myself and um and then i don't know i probably mentioned this all i know i mentioned it all before about this guitar but it, it had a different kind of a pick guard on it it had like a, actually, it was kind of a metal pickguard like this, but it went underneath the pickups. And I thought it looked kind of stupid. And one day, this good friend of mine came over and he had he had done some diamond plate pickguard on his Gothic V that he had. And he had this spare diamond plate. And he's like, bro, why don't you make a pickguard for that guitar? And I was like, hmm, okay. Well, yeah, why don't I do that? So I fucking, I just cut this out with this like fucking hundred dollar little bandsaw and I just crammed it through on this bandsaw and I don't know if you've ever cut any this is this is the thick diamond plate and this shit was a bitch and it's not perfectly symmetrical but it looks pretty good and um so I put that on and then I redid the controls because it had three knobs before and I actually took it to a shop and we did the one knob kind of thing so that's kind of like my Van Halen influence just doing a one volume knob because I never had a guitar that was like that. I always had a multitude of knobs. So I thought, let's just do one knob on this. And then, uh, you know, I did the grain filler and I did, and I wanted to make it black. So I thought, fuck man, you know what? Let's do a nitrocellulose fucking finish with nitrocellulose lacquer, man. Cause that was just, cause that was hard to get, you know? And it fucking, I didn't know it was so nuclear stinky, but it is. <laughs> And, old uh, school cool yeah man <laughs> a nuclear i did the the nitrocellulose lacquer and when i was doing the finish on the back of the neck i like i went through like three different colors on this motherfucker i did, i was doing sparkles i was doing all kinds of crap and i just wasn't happy with it and i would sand it down and just fucking try something else and when i was in the process of sanding it down one time i mean the whole guitar basically looked like this at one point or another <laughs> But when I was sanding it down, I thought, fuck, that looks really cool, man. I'm just going sure to cool. leave it like that. Yeah. So I masked off the neck alone and I left it like that. And it's all satin finish. You know, I do all my necks are satin. So um, I just left the neck and I masked it off to look real pretty. And, um, and I did the nitrocellulose lacquer on it. And um, then we got the Lumile. I had a guy do the Luma Dots. Yep. I had a shop do it because yeah. I wasn't capable of doing that drilling. So I actually had that done and um, and I called it a day. And uh, and it's and now it's kind of relicked up, got kind of chewed up. Uh, actually, my finish work <laughs> obviously was pretty fucking shitty because <laughs> it just the paint just kind of will chip right off on this thing. So um, that's basically the story on this one. And it's been my main one for all these shows that we've been doing. Um, I got a couple of new, I got a couple of new guitars in the works for um, the new shows that we've got next year, so I'm excited about that. You know, um, John was mentioning the SP Customs, and I've got an SP that's like being glued up and it's in process, and hopefully we will see that one um, at the next shows, and that's going to be like a King V shape with the maple. And uh, yes. so I'm excited about that, man. And that's uh, the story of my main Blackie. Blackie, nice. very cool. 
That's a classic, though. That yeah, that's a great guitar, yeah. but good great story, guy. too. Thanks, man. It's pretty yeah, man. I like it. Check. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, brother. Thank you, man. Hey, you're um, welcome. Thank you. Dad, Dad, I see a big stack of guitars behind you. What, uh, you show us one, please. All, All right. right. Well, I, I pulled out a couple, and they're in terrible condition, but I figured we start with one I've had around for a very long time. This is my my old my white ESP custom. Um, Dude. So the story behind this guitar, it was my first custom guitar after strapping formed, and um, I always wanted a white King V kind of guitar. And the reason I want a white King V is due to the person that was speaking just before I was just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> My old band Armorist back in this, I think it's 89. So you guys are on the Leaf Scars tour, Eric. Yeah. And you had a you had a white fucking Jackson King V. Yeah, man. With a reverse yeah. headstock. And from that moment, I'm I was like, I'm gonna fucking get one of those one day. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Um, now, that was it. Was that it? Yes, that, you, that was it. You, and it's been painted twice, but yeah. Oh this my god. So okay, so this guitar <laughs> is a direct yeah. result of that guitar that's fucking so cool dude <laughs> so when strapping got going this was my first custom i had for bsp and um it's a carrie king guitar from from 95 it's just the, the i liked the shape um and then everything else is different i just like i just like the body shape and it's just a, a set neck i like set necks um got a bunch of i don't know if you can see really it's hard to say i got my name on it and all that shit uh straight up single single pickup because fuck yeah Yes. Um, this volume knob is, it's, it's just for show. It's just one volume. There used to be a kill switch here and, uh, it, huh. it died. And, um, uh, what else? I don't know. Fuck 25, five. It's, it's great guitar. I fucking love it. It's still, you know, it, it's, it's aging gracefully. It used to be pearl white. Now it's pearl yellow. And, um, I took this, I took this, uh, the, the string retainer or fuck. I'm fucking blanking right now, man. I took this here thing off and uh, it's like this bright white underneath. It looked really cool. Um, so the story behind this guitar is when I got it, I don't know if you guys do this, but like when I get a new guitar, I like to, I'll just put it on a stand and sit there and fucking stare at it for like, you know, six hours or, you know, however long <laughs> it's going to be. And um, as I was sitting there staring at it, this is 95 when I got it. I'm sitting there staring at it and my cat walks into the room and like goes up on, on the back of the stand and just like was exploring the guitar and pushed it over on its face. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was, I was oh, like man. 15 feet away and I couldn't Shit. get there in time. And I just, I just, it was like slow motion. just like, oh. wow. Oh. And I'll see if I could, the cracks are still there. It cracked the very first day. Oh. Um, oh, if I get the angle oh. right. I don't know. But anyway, it's, cr it's cracked there. And it's cracked there. That they're, 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 they're still. I don't know. I can't. I can't get the. And I can't see what the fuck I'm doing. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Did it break the neck joint? Actually, it just. I think it just cracked the finish because <laughs> I've never had a problem with this guitar. I took. I took it immediately to my guy at the time, and he was like, I, "It's okay. It's okay." And um, wow. And the only thing I've changed over the years is the two is the uh, the uh, tuning machines. I put spursles on it. And uh, that's really, it's, it's still stock and uh, it's a fucking great guitar. It's been around the world a billion fucking times and uh, sounds pretty good right out of the case, <laughs> you know? So this is a fucking great yeah, guitar cool. and, I, and, I, and I really love it. And uh, I know I, I have another fellow ESP lover here, <laughs> Alex. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I was really that's happy. Cool for, yeah. That's yeah. cool for ESP because it doesn't have that weird uh, cut. It has more of like a standard uh, V cut. I don't it. I, I mean, don't like the offset stuff, really. So this, yeah. I mean, this, this one's very, you know, I'm all about symmetry. No, I, I love that. The symmetrical awesome. as they get, you know. Yeah, I never liked that little dip they put in there. I mean, that's supposed yeah. to, you can get the upper register, but I never liked yeah. it. I, I yeah, don't spend, cool, I man. don't spend much time up here. I, I, I prefer yeah. I prefer first positions, you know. So this shit right is on. fucking doodly do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that's that's there's a guitar there. That's my story. And yeah. Eric, thank cool, thank man. you for the inspiration, Eric. It's because of you that I have this guitar. Oh, dude, that, oh, that's wow. awesome. to hear that, man. 
Jed, yeah, I, that's I remember, Jed, I remember when I see, I remember seeing you at Nam, dude, and you were like repping like re, the Bernie Rico shit, and you like, yeah, that you was know, that was. I, I, I left ESP and it was like 2006 and, and went to run to Bernie Rico on Gary, on Gary Holt's recommendation. And, and, you know, at that, I'm, I'm glad I did. And, you know, it, it's, I feel bad because I have a loyalty to ESP and I'm really happy they took me back after my, my drifting for a few years. But I mean, the first few guitars that Bernie built me were, are they're fucking immaculate, man. I mean, they're, that, that's another show, you know? Uh, um, don't you have like a green vixen or something? Yeah, I got a green one and, and, and a black one. It's, it's so beautiful. I don't even play it, you know? Wow. And, uh, and uh, a black, a black, you know, wing dinger or whatever. It's got flames and shit on it. But, um, you know, and then, and then all that shit went, went south with Bernie Rico Jr. and, and the company. And, and he hurt so many people, a lot of my friends included. And uh, that's that's difficult. He was a good friend of mine. I mean, I I fucking went to bat for him in the end, and we tried to help him. I got together with Eric McKenna out in Pittsburgh from Boogie Street, and we tried to help him. And I wasn't even. You couldn't stop car. that. You couldn't stop that fucking plane crash from happening. What did what? I'm I'm unaware of the drama that happened. I remember seeing your Facebook post when he passed away. Yeah, well, I, he just he just he he. I guess he got in over his head and I, I don't know how to condense the story, but he, he took up more than he could, than he could take care of and took a lot of deposits on guitars that he never fucking built or yeah. delivered. And just a lot of people fucking That's hate him and rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. The shame. You know, I'll, I'll just leave that one there. That's, that's, that's a touchy yeah. one for a lot of people, you know? Oh, I get it. They're so a anyway. bummer. That'll yeah. Happen. Yeah, 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 really. That sucks. Sure. And especially with that, with that, with that uh, legendary status, his dad, you know, I mean, like, what a family what, and what a talent, what a family of talents. And just to see it kind of, anyway, yeah. another show. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome, mean, Jed. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, Alex, I see a bunch of guitars behind you, too. So yes. pull one out and show cool. us what's going on. <laughs> Um, well, I know you asked for two guitars, so two fa my two favorite guitars, but uh, favorite guitars change every couple months. You fall in love with one, and you know, so I guess I'll, I'll go uh, grab two of them that are my favorites at the moment and that kind of have an interesting uh, story behind them. So, uh, uh, first one is this it's a, uh, it's a 2009 uh, ESP. Uh, Alexi Leho model. Oh, and yeah, this this guitar. It's an older body uh, ebony fretboard, nectar uh, nectar body uh, maple neck. Um, I got the uh, Fishman Modern Influence put in there. I got the uh, Fu Tone Green um, Black in there. This and basically this this guitar originally belonged to uh, Cliff Evans from Tank. And it was his guitar, and he sold it to my uh, guitar player from my other band, Henny from uh, Shadows. And I just, you know, I remember he had the guitar for like a month, and I was just like, "Dude, I gotta have that guitar." I just fell in love with it, you know. Yeah. And because um, I, you know, I'm, I'm a V guy, as most people know. Um, but uh, yeah, it just the, the guitar just sounds amazing. It's just got such great sustain to it, the playability. Um, I actually tracked with it for the first time. I, did, I think I did two solos on, on the new emulation record with this, but it only has the one humbucker. So I like to, I like the neck pickup for some soloing and stuff like that. So I use one of my other ones. But um, yeah, so this guitar, and I actually traded this guitar to Henny for, I had a, um, I knew he was going to ask for this guitar, but I was just like, dude, not that guitar, but I had to have it. So it was a, I had a Charvel uh, USA. San Dimas Strat that I had. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, the black one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I traded him that guitar and I got this. And this guitar has, yeah, I did a few tours with this, a couple festival runs. And uh, so, yeah, finally it, it uh, made its mark on the new, uh, on the new, the new emulation record. So, first two solos. Nice, good fucking solid guitar there, man. Yeah, this is plays fucking amazing. And uh, this one was a was a gift from my wife. It was a surprise birthday present. So she basically 
um, talked to ESP and um, which was cool. They like hooked her up and surprised the hell out of me. You know, I came home one day and nice. surprised me with this guitar for my birthday. It's a um, ESP Eclipse and uh, I got the Fishman's and it has an Evertune. Yeah, I saw guitar. that. Yeah. And at first I was just not not having the Evertune. <laughs> They're fucking weird, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I, you know, really had a you know, I went through a lot with this guitar. So I finally, like, I took it to my normal guy that sets up my stuff and he just didn't, you know, Tom, actually, Hawk, you, as you know, Jed, and John, yeah. too, I think. Yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. he's the man. So Tom just couldn't, you know, Tom's an old-timer, I think, and he just didn't, couldn't yeah. wrap his head around the ever two, you know? So, yeah. so I took it to uh, a mutual friend of mine up in New York that um, <clears throat> he does, like, Jeff Beck and Billy Gibbons and all these other guys, guitars up in New York. And he is real good friends with the, um, the, uh, the guy that invented the Evertune. So he set this up for me. And I've actually gotten, a, you know, the hang of this guitar, but it sounds, it's probably one of the best sounding and playing guitars that I own. It's, uh, you know, it's basically like a Les Paul. It's, it's a mahogany body with a maple top, mm -hmm. um, 24, three, uh, three quarter scale. Um, and uh, stays in tune. The Evertune definitely works. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. the only thing about it. I, you know, I've recorded a bunch of stuff with this with my other project. Um, you know, I just I don't feel comfortable with the Evertune live, and it's just something goes wrong. I, I can't tune on the flyer. Right? You know, you have to have the tech hand the tech real quick and uh, like a guitar if it goes out of tune. So, but in the studio, it's just amazing. And this is a guitar that I probably uh, play the most at home. Mm -hmm. you know? Can you tell uh, me about those? Yeah, and Evertune? you know, and my wife got yeah. me this guitar. So even ESP did a, um, they did a little story about it, which was really cool. You know, nice. They were, you know, like oh, Alex's wife, you know, yeah. contacted us. <laughs> got a pretty cool wife. Your wife buys you a guitar. So. Fuck oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, these my are wife my two favorite the guitar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my wife doesn't give me any guitar. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so those are at the moment those are the two uh i had a question for that ever that evertune bridge is that you have a problem i mean does it bend okay does it feel like oh yeah that? you you could set it up for you, there, there's like three stages so mm -hmm. the uh the second stage it's like you can't bend the, the strings, so you can set it that way where it's just you know it's just bizarre. It's you know. Well, what what? So there's no amount you could bend you it. You, you can't. Well, what you do is you, you take the string and then you bring it sharp and then bring it back down again, and then you can bend it. You know, you can bend it like any other guitar. You know, and oh, okay. I I even heard stories about sustain and stuff because they do take out. Of, it's not like a Floyd Rose or something. Mm -hmm. They take out more wood out of the back, yeah. you know, the guitar. But I mean, this guitar sustains like hell. Mm. It it's yeah. sounds amazing. You know, unfortunately, yeah. I was going to track the rhythms for the um, the new emulation record, and then the day that I was leaving, I was going to change the battery, you know, for the Fishman and uh, pickups in there, and I broke the. Uh, you know the connector or whatever it got stuck in the battery <laughs> first time that's ever happened to me so i had to use one of my other esps to track the mm -hmm. but um but yeah i mean uh evertune definitely i i definitely said you know highly uh, recommend them especially for the studio you know yeah. it definitely saves a lot of time with tuning and stuff yeah like that. i've talked with devin a lot about the evertune thing because i've wanted I, like i should have just have one evertune guitar and he's like dude you, once once you kind of yeah. get used to it and stuff he's like it's just like what yeah, you said yeah. it's like it's it's it they're so fucking solid and it, it's it's right there for you all the time so i played yeah, a couple yeah. of his and, and it's weird but I, I sort of get i think i think i'm gonna definitely get one soon yeah and, and they and, you know it, it sounds like you know, I prefer as far as like sound wise, like a fixed bridge guitar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Same. I love Floyd's for playing live. I love Absolutely. the locking system because, you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's got that, that tonality of, yeah. you know, of a fixed bridge. And, uh, yeah. That's yeah, super I, cool you know, I, like I said, I was pretty devastated at first when I, when I got it because mm -hmm. my wife got me the guitar and, uh, 
you know, and I was just like, man, I'm not going to be able to play this fucking thing, you know, because it was just a mess. You know, I took it to Tom Hawk, you know, then finally I took it to the guy up in New York and he he just knew, you know, what to do yeah. with it. Wow. But, you know, weird. I know it's a, uh, it's, it's a tricky thing, and, you know, it's hard yeah. to get used to. But, uh, wow. But yeah. There you oh, have cool. it. Cool. Awesome, man. Do you like the uh, the twenty five and three quarters, like the Les Paul scale, better? The, uh, the twenty four three quarter, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do. Uh, I I have um, another guitar. I'll show you real quick. I I drastic far preferred. I mean, I've got twenty five fives, but uh, the last couple of customs I got are 24, 24 yeah, this, three quarter. Man, this They're, V has a twenty four. This ESP V. Uh, yeah, I, this is right. actually a recorder all the inhalation solos like the rest. Of the Super night. comfortable, man. Yeah, yeah, wow. and this has got the twenty-four three-quarter scale, so it's, yeah, it's great for leads. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I love, I love that, I love that scale. That's my. I, I think you you have them on yours, right? And you have the the, the um, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, set in next too, right? On yeah, customs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mine mine are all set ins. I haven't been yeah. a not much of a neck through guy. I've always had problems with with resonance. You know, I, I love neck throughs, but I have to say this set in next. They, yeah. They sound fucking so good. Yeah. That's, I, I just love them for, for whatever that, reason. That just, it seems like a setting. perfect balance. It's good balance. Yeah. 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 It's like the eclipses I have, you know, it's yeah. just like the less parts of same. I, I had a couple of eclipses back in, back, you know, like 15 years ago and I sold them and I wish I didn't because I see that one and I'm like, fuck, I wish uh, I saw that. They're great <laughs> guitars. They're really yeah, great guitars. They, and they're so versatile too. Yeah. You know, like you can do anything with those guitars. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, there you go. Very nice, cool. nice. Yeah, I have a Chibson upstairs, and it's uh that scale, and I, I really like it. It's more comfortable for me, especially as I get older. It's uh with my shoulders and my condition and everything. It's harder for yeah. me here, especially and play comfortably. And obviously, I'm playing on those low frets a lot, so uh yeah. the short yeah. scale is definitely more comfortable for myself. Yeah. So it, it gets a little, it gets a little taken used to, especially playing rhythms. You know, when, mm-hmm. when you go from the twenty-five five scale yeah. to the 24 three quarter scale you know right. but um yeah you just got to get used to it you know soloing yeah. it's just it's, it's easy yeah. but. i started on a on a like old get my old gibson v which is actually in a shop right now getting fixed up and that's what yes. i grew up on and then i went to the 25 fives and i came back and i'm like it's like going home for me you know yeah, I, yeah. I love them so comfortable yeah. yeah if you start on that scale it's you know you're it's it's like anything any guitar you start on i think it's always like putting on those you know good old pair yeah. of converse you know it's just like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. On, you know sure, and right. i know i play i i mostly play 25 fives myself <clears throat> but i know what you're saying especially on v's because the the you know it's just the nature of that guitar and your hands are out of position a lot and it's like yeah. you know it kills your shoulder i don't know about you know we're all old here so it's like oh. <laughs> but you know me, I my, did, a buddy I'm a buddy shot. of mine my body. Yeah, a buddy <laughs> of mine played uh actually built a reverse randy Rhodes, mm-hmm. and he built it 24 with 24 fret and i thought that was the most comfortable guitar i have ever played and i was always after him that you know, you know, Steve, you know him. It's a uh, Scott Kopeck actually built it. Oh, but yeah. uh, it, it was an amazing guitar. And I and I always said I was gonna have him build me one just like it. And I, I just never got around to it. But yeah, and with the V's, I could definitely see that. I play more conventional style stuff now mm-hmm. just because I grew up with Strat. I'll show mine in a minute, but it's like I'm kind of going back to that by how you oh, know you guys were all too, talking. I gotta, yeah, but you guys were all talking V, so I yeah. dug mine out. I had to show it off, so I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, I actually but, wrote to Scotty a while ago. I was talking to him about possibly having to build something that was like, uh, I don't know, I was kind of falling in love with the old uh, Charvel star shape a little bit. I just oh, yeah, uh, yeah. dig yeah. them. You don't see too much anymore. And I was looking for something that was uh, the shorter scale, one pickup, a kill switch. Uh, just no, no, no nonsense. It would have to have a Kaler in it, though, because – everything I have has to have one of those. Otherwise I'm always reaching down for it and it's not there. So, you know, I I come from the Jeff Hanneman, Kerry King school and uh, it's just a necessity for me, you know, Mm -hmm. he can definitely build it, man. He can definitely get you. I I, I was able to uh, check out one of uh, Jeff Hanneman's guitars recently, actually a couple weeks ago. uh, I I played in Vegas. I played his, uh, his ESP. Uh, uh, Jeremy have it. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy that brought it. it. That's fucking yeah, cool, and, man. And Jeremy dropped it on stage. 
Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got to leave. You're, you're <laughs> shitting me. But it's, it was the guitar yeah, from the uh, Seasons in the Abyss video. It's oh, that guitar. Man. And he, he got it. What's that? He dropped it. He yeah, dropped he dropped it. it on stage. Yeah, oh. at the show. Wow. I think it's all right. Did you know? he have but it on he, stage he or was he playing? Good it? Afterwards, that's for sure. Was it? Was it? <laughs> that he guitar play it would live? not bring out anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but it played it played amazing. You know, how about it did? Yeah. It. How did the drop occur? How did what's the, that? How was did he, the drop? Was he playing it? Passing he it? was playing his his uh, his strap locks broke. Oh. Oh shit! You know, like, oh man! Of all guitars, wow. you know, for this that, that's the one <laughs> guitar you want your first strap locks to work on, man. Come on! Fuck. Oh yeah, he he. I, I remember seeing him afterwards, and man. he was just yeah, he was you know, he's just like yeah. all right, dude. You who, know? who bought that whole collection of that that time? I remember all he's those. Got well, oh, Jer Jer Jeremy, those? yeah, and I was really happy he did it because he kind yeah, of kept, them, kept them to get, he kept them all together. You know what I mean? So I think oh, that's, that's awesome. That's I remember cool. those were going, uh, going off, and you know, I don't have two nickels yeah. half the time. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's I, cool. I'm glad somebody's got them. Yeah, I think he's got his old 800s. Some of his old 800s. I think he does too. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's got kind of like uh, a little museum going on, which is really awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's awesome. A total legend. Total legend. Well, yeah. Brad, do you show us one of yours. Show us what you got. Yeah, I mean, I was going. I knew the clientele that was going to be here, but I was going to have short, sharp, pointy guitars, and <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to do that. But you guys were talking all these V's. I had to show this one off quick. I ran and got it. This is my blood splatter, oh, nice. Jackson. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Eric's salivating right now. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> looks on that. That looks better than mine. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. This was a. Uh, I remember seeing this guitar on a, a Drum City Guitar Land um, for sale. Hold on a second. Freaking phone's falling here. <laughs> this, don't worry but, about uh, the phone, man. Just take care of the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why do you think I put the guitar down? But um, yeah, I remember seeing that guitar, and I, I was like, "Oh man, I always love that thing." And um, then I ended up working. You know, I worked for Dean Guitars, which was funny when Cafferty was. Kind of saying this stuff. <laughs> I remained uh, quiet, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I end up uh, Brian Hoffman from uh, Deicide working with me. So yeah, uh, you know, I get to know Brian, and then he brings that thing in, and I'm just like, I remember seeing that guitar, drum set of Guitar Land. And he's like, yeah, that's where I got it from, and he toured with it in a whole nine yards. And then one day he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about selling it, and I just went over and grabbed a case with guitar and put it at my desk. I said sold. So, That's great. I yeah, love it. I, I was not going to let that go. There's no, no way. Man. I have a I have another custom uh, Jackson too. I had actually built for me, um, and it was uh, it was actually Dave Mustaine's guitar. It was uh, the serial number wow. starts with DM, and it was white. And I was looking for a black 22 fret, and that's why he didn't want the guitar because he wanted 24. So they're like, well, they can paint it black, and you can have the guitar in like two months or something like that. And I was like. Nice. Okay, so I actually have Dave Mustaine's uh, Jackson. Was that, that was a Mike cool. Shannon guitar? Built guitar? Part of me? Mike Shannon? Mike Shannon? Was that a yes. Mike Shannon? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Nice. That was back in that day. So it was like, you know, mid 90s or whatever when I got that. But yeah, that that's the backup to that. So um, yeah, I played those for a lot for a long time. But you know, as anything, you kind of go back to what you're used to. So uh, speaking of Dean, uh, I kind of showed this briefly. Um, John Hill was the master builder at Dean Guitars for a long time. He also nice. built uh, bases for uh, Tom Herrera. If you ever see it, like old pictures of Tom playing, you know, Slayer pictures, and you'll see the hill on the headstock. Oh, nice. so, yeah. He and this is one of my guitars. He's, he's really good. Uh, he's awesome. He still he has uh, bootleg guitars out of Cleveland now. And um, mm. same thing. I like the one volume knob, you know, three way. EMGs. Yeah. This has got the titanium upgrades on it. Um, it's also got this little trick thing too. It's a nice. plexi glass, so you can yeah, see everything. Cool. Yeah. So, and I never put, you know, covers on these because nope. I'm always adjusting. Never. Them, so, <laughs> nah, it's like why? 
Yeah. So that was that. And I really put this one, this guitar stains, sustains like crazy. And I, I, I love this thing. It kind of reminds me of like a BC Rich, almost like a PV Vandenberg kind of mm-hmm. style to it. it. has the input jack on the side. So mm-hmm. it's pretty killer. And then my backup to that is this one. Oh, nice. That, nice. that fucking same, guitar kills, man. Nice. Same guitar. Just with the airbrush on it. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, well, dude, that paint job is killer. Beautiful graphics. Yeah, yeah. that's total yeah. like Mike Learn style almost. Yeah. 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 I forget who, the guy who, did that who paint painted. Job? Oh, you okay. know, I forget his name. Um, he was out of Cleveland too. And the other reason I brought this up is there's another one like this that I've been trying to hunt down for a long time for probably almost 10 years now. It's the exact same paint job, but it's silver. It's more mm-hmm. of a, you know, more of an aircraft thing, which I'm really into. No, I'll show you that in a second. And it has bomb inlays on it. Ooh. And the guy that had the guitar passed away and his wife ended up selling the whole collection for probably mm-hmm. nothing. Wow. And um, they can't track it down. I put it up on Facebook, Instagram and everything. And I actually put these two guitars and say, there's a third. And I have mm-hmm. a picture of it with, you know, of the paint job, but so far I've been striking out. So if anybody is watching, <laughs> I'm looking yeah. for the silver one of this. So, and we professionally call it the bomber. So it's, it's pretty killer. Nice. But over to my That's Dean's great. rule. I'll make this quick cause I got too many, but uh, this is a Dean uh, MAB for the Michelangelo video. And when I started oh, at okay. Dean, when I started at Dean, uh, they didn't really have too many 24 fret guitars. So uh, this was like literally like the first one they came out with um, when I was there. Because in 2007, they stopped making the um, Razorback 255s fees, which I wanted. And I couldn't grab one. So they were all like 22 frets. And they made this. And, you know, it's a conventional body style. But it has that, you know, it's got the chevrons on the on the frets. Cool. And it's an import. And it's got the Fishman's. I put those in. This blings nice on stage, you know, when whites yeah. hit it. <laughs> you can blind some people. It's kind of cool. But um, what I did, though, there was a middle pickup. I don't know if you can see that on my phone. Yeah. yeah nice. That's a that's a piece of ebony that I glued in there. Nice. And then the, the guy at Dean, I actually inlaid. Those are my son's initials and his birthday. Awesome. Uh-huh. I love it. Cool. So it's a little, you know, it's a kind of personal thing. The last tour I did with All Out War in 2010 in Europe, I took this. So I always say it was like, you know, I took my son with me on tour. You know, it's kind of cool. So uh, I like this guitar. Yeah. He actually, Michael signed the back of the head. It sucks. So it was kind of cool. So, yeah. Nice one. And then one last one, I promise. <laughs> I won't be as, I'm not, I'm still not as long winded as Chris, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But here's, here's the same guitar from the custom shop. I went more two pickups, uh, Fishman's. These all had the push poles. Um, nice. This has the scraped maple top. So everything's black, and then that's all kind of taped off so the maple top shows. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Style. Like yeah, I like that. Yeah. This guitar yeah. plays fantastic. I mean, it's literally one of my best playing guitars. I, this is like my main right now. What I do on most side kill is that and the other one i have another one that's pretty similar to this so this one's cool and then the last one is my one i'll never part with <laughs> i know we're supposed to do three i'm sorry i'm guitar passionate <laughs> but uh cool. it's my fender strat i bought this brand new in 1983 it's a japanese fender strat oh the three bolt huh yeah three bolt my chick I took her on tour with me too. <laughs> nice. But um, this guitar, quick story, when I ordered it, it was supposed to be black with white pickups. And I got it and it was white with black pickups, the total opposite of what I wanted. Mm-hmm. It has the big headstock on it too. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it never stayed in tune. It sounded like shit. I hated this guitar. I used to th- take it off and throw it half the time. I'm surprised it, it's still in one piece. It has a couple of battle scars on it. But every time I went to sell it, 
I had a lot of buddies that worked at music shops and the main guy was Scott Kopeck, like I was talking before. And um, he was like, oh, the tuning issue, we can solve that. They have these shaler locking tuners, get those. So I replaced the tuners, got those on there. Of course, they didn't line up with the natural holes. So I got holes in the back. <laughs> I got a few of those too. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I didn't like the tone of it. You know, the, the stock signal coils in this thing was really off they hummed and hissed and farted at you half the time and and then uh he was like oh try these hot rails out you know yeah. and i had the original hot rails in this and then he put 500k pots in it mm-hmm. and then when i cranked it up it was just like it's exactly what i needed you know and i played the hell out of this guitar i literally the first guitar i went on tour with in europe took it out, and it was the only guitar i brought with me i would never do that now <laughs> i would at least have two with me <laughs> It's right. the only guitar I brought with me. And by the end of the tour, uh, like a lot of the hardcore bands I was with were like looking into getting strats. They loved the sound of this thing. They were like, wow, this is awesome, man. But yeah, it's, you know, classic. Well, it's been sitting in the case yeah. a while. It's actually the red, the red of the case is on the back of the head, uh, back of the oh, fretboard. Yeah. yeah. But um, it looks like yeah. the uh, 70s uh, strat because it's, you know, the headstock well, and the. Yeah. And yeah, I bought it in 83, but this is what they did in 83 for the Japanese was the bigger 70s headstock on it. And that was yeah, the other yeah. reason I really love this guitar. And um, it was funny. I hated it. Wanted to light it on fire <laughs> half the time. And then it's it's literally the guitar I'll never part with. It's this one. Nice. It's, it's nice. freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I dig it, man. That's cool. Yeah. And then that one, too. Got a Steve Ray Vaughn strap. Oh, look at nice. that. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Cool. That one's a good story too, but uh, I've talked long enough. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I have a Japanese uh, Strat 89. I think it is. It's uh, one of the uh, dual coil. It's uh, just the, the two pickups, not the three, the uh, dual humbuckers. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it actually came with a Kaler, which is crazy and uh, needs a little bit of work, but uh, I'm going to get it going. Uh, I think you've given me inspiration to do that. The thing plays great. Just uh, mm-hmm. need some electronic work on it. Yeah, that one, when I started at Dean, the white one, um, the frets I worn completely f- uh, flat. It was like playing a, f- a fretless guitar, and it, it, that's why it sat in the case for a long time. And then, you know, working at Dean, I seen guys doing fret work, and I said, and they were telling me how to do it. So I'm sitting there with a soldering gun and putting on the frets, and I'm like, you know, really gentle, but I, I did it, and I put the frets in, and uh, then I bought all the new uh, newer uh, hot rails for it. And uh, the yeah. guys there wired it up for me. It looks really primo underneath the pick guard. And that thing sounds better than it did day one. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's awesome. But yeah, I still use it for some recording stuff and all that. I'll never tour again. It's it's retired. <laughs> but yeah, I you know, love those guitars, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. All right, Denny, we're moving right on to you, my friend. I, I tried to, to pick uh, two guitars out of the best stories uh, behind them. Um, I'm super old school. So like for me, uh, when I grew up, it was about Kiss. Uh, so I, I wanted The Last Ball. I wanted Ice, Ibanez Iceman. And uh, my next door neighbor was Frank Marino. Uh, so when I was a younger kid, oh. uh, he was playing uh, in, he was the house behind my house. So he was shirtless with his SG soloing, probably on acid, but like, so when I was like uh, seven, six, seven, eight years old, he was, he was like uh, my next door neighbor. And uh, so that's always the guitars I wanted to have. And uh, eventually like when, uh, you know, when like Metallica Slayer came out and all that, I got like uh, BC Rich Mockingbird and all that, that those kind of guitars. Um, I have six kids. I have like four older daughters and two younger sons. And um, I gave them all my guitars that I are very um, um, close to my heart, like my Mockingbird, all that, my Ibanez, uh, my Les Paul. So I give one of each of my kids as one guitar as a souvenir from their dad, right? Um, so like, I'm an old school guy. Uh, and I, you know, like I sometimes don't believe in like, seven strings and six string and like eight strings and all those like new guitars and um in 2008 uh, uh, 2008 i was uh backstage at the commodore ballroom in vancouver nevermore was playing 
And uh, I met uh, Warrell Dane uh, when he was in Sanctuary. Um, like um, uh, Aggression and Voivod's sound engineer, Mike Amstad, uh, used to do sound for Megadeth. Um, so, uh, and Sanctuary was opening. So I met, I met Warrell and we became friends and kept in touch. So anyway, I'm, back, I'm backstage, Nevermore. Uh, and I'm talking to Warrell and like Jeff Loomis is like kind of like noodling on this guitar there on the side. And I, I so Warrell, Warrell, Warrell's talking to me, but I keep looking at Jeff like, wow, like what, what's that guitar, right? And, and then start to talk to Jeff, uh, let me play on the Schecter. Uh, he just had a new, like a Jeff Loomis Schecter. So, um, you know, I, I never played a seven string before. And I was like, wow, like I'm a big guy. I'm like six foot three, 275 pounds. Uh, I never wanted to have like a, a, a flying V because, you know, to me, a flying V, you got to be like Michael Schenker size to be able, like, I'm just too fat to fucking play with a flying V, right? Wow. So, 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 <laughs> so I, I, so they like, the day after, like, uh, Two, two, three days after we, I went to see them, uh, Warrell Dean sent me this guitar. Um, it is like a Schecter, uh, it's the Loomis. It's, it's, uh, it's one piece. Um, and this was like the fifth one that was ever made. Uh, and, he, and he gave it to me, he sent it to me. Um, and I've been playing these guitar more and more and more. Uh, I have six of those. I have wow. three red, uh, like I think they called it like vampire red or something, and I have like I have three black. Um, it's because it's becoming my go-to guitar, and uh, I never thought I would play a seven string. But the funny thing is, Aggression used to have like a a, a song in drop B back in like eighty four, eighty five. So on stage, we used to like have to undo the the lock nut. Drop the yeah. string and like feedback and like fucking noise and everything, right? But we had to do it. The crowd was waiting while we were tuning our guitar. It sounded like shit. But now with this guitar, I can just fucking go and it's a B string. So I can just go and play the song, like uh, no wait in between songs. So, you no, know, it's uh, uh, yeah, always been uh, 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 super glad that he sent me that guitar. And after that, yeah. it became like uh, my go to guitar. But I would have never, ever, ever tried it unless you know it became a gift and now i got i got six of those so that's, that's really cool yeah. jeff's a great yeah. guy man that, that whole crew they're all good people so that's a oh, nice yeah. story that touches my heart i love jeff uh the other one is <laughs> it's the completely opposite of like uh, of, uh eric's great job on his guitar i can show you how you can do a really bad job on a guitar so <laughs> yeah, like a reason it, it, in Vancouver, in Vancouver, we have this guitar tech named Barry Ewer. And Barry, Barry. worked on like uh, Devin Townsend's guitar, works on like, he was Fine. guitar tech for like <laughs> Joe Barry, <laughs> said, uh, yeah. Malcolm Young and all that. And uh, yeah. so at some point while he was working with Joe Barry, uh, Joe Barry gave him a gift of a guitar that he received from Eddie Van Halen. I'm a huge Van Halen fan, so like I, so, so Barry had that guitar uh, and, and, and then he showed it to me, like kind of like showing off and I'm like, fuck you. And like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so eventually he sold it to me. I, I paid a really good price for it. Uh, but so, so that guitar, I've been playing it. Like, I think I got it in like uh, maybe 2003, 2004. I think it's a like first edition uh, Wolfgang that, uh, that was given to, uh, to Joe Perry and then Joe Perry somehow gave it to Barry and I bought it from him. Um, like I said earlier, I have like two young sons and boys have a tendency to like, you know, experiment with stuff in the house. Oh man. So, uh, <laughs> so like um, I used to have a lot of stickers and stuff on my guitars when I was younger. Like, you know, we used to play like when we opened for Dark Angel, I had the Mockingbird with a bunch of, you know, like, gbh and fucking agnostic front sticker trying to look cool so my sons tried to do the same on this precious wolf gang so <laughs> now this is what it looks like 
They, they oh, constantly, no. like, uh, first of all, they put some glue on it. Oh. They try to keep a sticker on there. Uh, they, they, they put a, like a Freebird sticker somehow. <laughs> uh, they insert like some like, uh, like, I don't know, they try to pull some, the detuner doesn't work anymore. It's like jammed there. Oh, uh, it won't come out. Um, so I, I, I kind of left it like that. It's been in the case for now for like, I don't know, maybe like six years like that, seven years. Um, my daughter really wants it because of the story behind it. So I'm going to go and get it like, a, so Barry's going to like send it, repaint it, and he's going to like uh, make it back uh, looking like it used to be. But like, they, I don't know, like, I don't even know what this is. Like, I, I, I tried to use like Goo Gone. I tried to use like lighter fluid, anything to remove it. It was not going to come out. Same as the <laughs> sticker. I can't take it off. I tried everything. Um, and like, but it, it, this, this store, this guitar was given to Joe Perry by Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> And this is this is the respect awesome. it got. <laughs> oh man, that's a that's a fucking great story. I love it. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I. Oh my god, that story's got he, legs, man. It's got some magic like, in that guitar. You definitely <laughs> win with the guitar story, man. That's that's number one. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah, so well, if anybody that, can fix it, Barry can. You know, well, that's it. Like, I, Barry, I, Barry, Barry, you are out in Vancouver, guys. He's like the Tom Hawk out here. He's they're, they're equivalent, man. So, Barry will be able to do it for sure. Yeah, he, he moved up to Kamloops. I uh, kind of some semi retired in his Kamloops. So, uh, my son's playing a hockey tournament out there. So, I, I'm gonna bring it to him and uh, see nice. what he can do. I'm sure he yeah. can. I, it's Barry, he's gonna fix it. Hey, he can fucking do it. You should have seen my face when I opened the case and saw this. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, zoinks. That's it, guys. Awesome. Wow. That was an amazing cool. story. I, I don't really know how I'm gonna follow that one, bro. Yes. That's I, a, that's I, who can follow that story, man? Shit. Yeah. Was, <laughs> I'm glad right. I got mine out when I did. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, 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 yeah. The funny thing is that my story revolves around Joe Perry too. Because nice. uh, being a 13 year old back in 1978 and seeing yeah. Joe play Cal Jam 2, he used, uh, I believe it was a red or a oh. pink beat, rich bitch. And, yeah. you know, I was really into Ace Fraley. And uh, I mean, Ace was my dude. And then Angus Young there after you that. Really, yeah. yeah, there, there <laughs> he is. So, yeah, oh, there yeah. You go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like my brilliant people, what can I say? You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Uh, those are my dudes. I, I really wanted a Les Paul until I saw Joe Perry playing this beast with it. I mean, it was one of the 10 strings too, but he only had six yeah. of the strings. Yeah. It was just a nutty guitar. So, uh, you know, come that's sometimes. Right. Uh, oh, that's iconic stuff, man. Yeah. That era. Nutty, yeah. nutty stuff, man. You know, all the pictures of him holding that guitar is. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Unlike yeah. Bootleg. Yeah, man. Yeah. Bootleg record, right? Good fuck, man. Uh, right, right. Back. That's Right. Forget Nothing about it. My He's probably the first guy to, to, you know, make BC Rich kind of known. I think. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I would say so, at know. least one of them. Yeah, definitely. And then, then Rick Derringer, sometime later, he built yep. uh, the stealth. But um, I actually had a stealth at one time, and let me tell you, man, uh, thing did not play that well, considering it was a guitar that was made by uh, a guitarist. But uh, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. This is uh this was the uh, you probably yeah the lights bad. It's working kind there of. Almost it got, there it is, right oh, there. there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was the family at one time. There was the stealth there. That was one of the original yeah, nice. first series. But uh, stealth on think, the right, right? The stealth. Yeah, uh, yes. One? Yep. Just did not play that well. And oh. uh, but uh, maybe so, that was a turn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my number one guitar first, and then I'll, it it actually goes into the the number two story. So. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it so you can really see it. Nice. Full white. Yes. Full Sweet. electronics. Taylor. Neck through. Yeah. American yeah. made. Badass. Full yeah. regalia, man. So inlays. Things amazing, man. So uh the story goes is uh 
I was driving way too fast in a 67 Firebird ragtop and uh, smashed my car into some mailboxes, ruined the car, wrecked it. So uh, I had just taken a loan out to get a guitar like this. I was actually going to custom order the guitar. So <laughs> even though I wrecked my guitar the next day, I got my friend to drive me down to Sam Ash in uh, White Plains, New York. And um, I had planned on custom ordering a guitar. Foolish. I mean, yeah, who cares about having a car? Because you got to have a BC Rich, you know? You can't. <laughs> I actually had a Hamer V at the time. It was a friend of mine, and uh, I did kind of a bad deal with him. And uh, it was a nice <laughs> car. It actually, I believe it was one of the original Schecters because it said Schecter up on the headstock, but it was actually a Hamer guitar. And uh, so, uh, you know, after seeing Slayer, I, I really needed to get a BC Rich. So, uh, yeah, who needs a car when uh, you're going to go get a BC Rich custom ordered, you know? So, uh, with 2000 bucks in my pocket, I went in expecting the custom order guitar and I sat down. He had this one on the shelf. So I figured I would play it and I, I had to have a bitch and it had to have all the stuff in it. You know, yeah, even though yeah. on, I found that these are actually what they call noise makers because they just make a lot of noise. So <laughs> honestly, when, when yeah. I'm uh, playing live, uh, the batteries are taken out. I just use my amp and whatever pedals I'm using to get my sound. Uh, these things look really cool, and I mean, I still to this day think they look awesome, but they really add a lot of horrible noise that you cannot control with 10 noise. It, it makes no difference. <laughs> but anyway, I uh, went into Sam Ash, uh, took this guitar down. Um, I, it's one of those guys that when, you know, when I'm sitting at home, I can play my ass off. But when you go into guitar place, it's like, oh, uh, what do you play? You know, it's like you don't want to sound like an idiot, and there's certain songs you can't play, and just like... I don't know. I always kind of struggled with that. But when I picked up this guitar, I played for two hours straight, never put it down, never had to think about what I was going to play next. It just all flowed. So uh, after making a deal, this was uh, $1,500 at the time and uh, $1,300 uh, hard shell case. And about seven chords later, I took this baby home. And uh, wow. been, yeah, this has been my main war machines recorded just about anything that I've done. And uh you know, to this day, it's it still sounds great. It's uh, tuned to C right now. Um, just like John, I, I mean, I started out with the Kaler, so I'm a big Kaler guy. I use some Floyd Roses, and uh, I actually have a Petrucci, too, and uh, it has his uh, system on it, which I really like. So um, the funny thing is, is I'll show you my number two right now. Let me put this guy down really carefully. Crash. These BC rigs are very, <laughs> very heavy. Like, is this guitar oh, very heavy or not too heavy? Oh, actually, not too bad, to be honest with you. I wouldn't say it's as heavy as a Les Paul. Okay. So, in 2000, my brother in law tells me, yeah. my brother in law tells me that. He is buying a BC Rich Warlock offline for 1100 bucks. And uh, I said, okay, cool, you know, awesome. So uh, he gets this thing home and uh, I go over his house to try it out. And I'm looking at the serial numbers and I'm like, the serial number on this thing almost looks exactly like the serial number on my BC Rich bitch. So I did some research and as it turns out, this guitar was made in the same factory uh, in the same week back in 1985. But it's, uh, I actually, uh, the one I actually purchased is in 87. I guess it had sat on the shelf that long. And uh, this one uh, I got in uh, 2000. But you can see it's pretty much the sister guitar, same paint job. It doesn't have the full electronics, but it has uh, half the electronics, the noise makers as I call them. And uh, also American made, neck through, and uh, just a sweet, sweet guitar. And yes. uh, Sharp these guitar, are, man. Yeah, these are the... Oh, thank you, brother. These are the two that I'll take to my grave, even though right now I'm actually looking for something more like... A, I'm actually looking for something more like a Jackson, uh, one of the Dinkies, or I'm looking for like one of the old USA Charvels or something like that. Just something yeah. that's a little bit of a classic shape, something that's really uh, economical, easy to play, without all the fun stuff on it. I mean, yeah. it's actually gotten to the points where I'm seeing the price on these things. It's like, if I was able... If I ever was out playing, I don't know if I'd actually want to take one of these with me without a bodyguard, you know, Man. because, uh, I mean, I've seen them jump from like 1800 bucks just like maybe five years ago to like 
I see these things going for like 4,500 now, which is nuts, man. You know? And uh, I had a stealth and I had the iron bird and the mockingbird actually just uh, recently traded. And the funny thing is, it's just like Denny. Uh, never thought I would be a seven string player until I played one. And uh, I love my seven string now. I have a uh, Petrucci and I have, um, uh, I can't even think what the name of the other one is. That's how much I play it. But uh, the other one has the uh, Loomis pickups in it. And uh, it's a pretty sweet guitar. Uh, mm. I'm really having a brain fart, guys. I can't think of the name of it. It's a smaller company. But, uh, but anyway, so that's my story. Uh, not really quite as exciting as Denny's story, unfortunately. This wasn't given to me by Terry King or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it doesn't. Uh, but, uh, I mean, basically, that's where what it was. Is it was uh, a lot of people say, oh, you know, because of my style and everything, you know, you must have gotten that because of Slayer, you know. And uh, honestly, it was uh, Joe Perry. Joe Perry playing those old BC riches, man. It, it just stuck with me. And even to this day, it, uh, it still does, you know? Yeah. And that's why, even though I would like to get something that's maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, more of a mundane, common shape, something that has like some not, nice contours. I actually really like my Petrucci. It's like that. And uh, it's just much easier to, to play. It, it balances much better and everything. But uh, you don't have to worry about the points cracking off of them or anything crazy like that. But, uh, you know, I will always consider myself uh, a BC Rich player, uh, probably nice. for life. But uh, nice. so yeah, those music bands play really nice. I, I played a few of those too, and uh, they, they mm -hmm. I think they have that shorter scale to them as well. And um, it's yeah. probably easier for you, Steve, because I know you have some you know issues going on there. And I'm yeah. sure that guitar is real comfortable for you. I you got know? that old that Mick Mars disease, the ankylosing yeah. spondyl. So it's all my bones off. Uh, it's kind of like rheumatoid, but instead of joint damage, your bones kind of fuse together. So right. uh, kind of crazy disease, man, you know, but I manage it. I still able to play, you know, and yeah. uh, keep your head up and do what you have to do, you know. Right. Mm. But so, uh, so, uh, pretty much very nice has... guitars, man. I, uh, I've never been much of a BC rich guy, you know, but um, I remember as a kid seeing uh, Joe Perry with the, the BC rich bitch. Yeah. And Immediately, I was just like, wow, that is like the evilest looking guitar I ever saw. And then fast forward, I guess it was like 85, I saw Dave Mustaine with the uh, he had a, a bitch, too, that yeah. he played. White. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. He also, so, uh, you know, he also, I always liked that guitar. But I have to mention, McEntee had a, an old BC Rich Strat back in the day. And I used to right. borrow, borrow that model. guitar a lot. And oh, that wow. guitar was just one of the best mm -hmm playing sounding it was a i think it was a custom guitar that john got yeah they called got the, the assassins it was a blue one they had with the kalar on it and yeah my it was an st it just said on it so i guess oh, it was st okay oh, yeah. all right yeah and, i know uh, i think later they became the assassins if i'm not mistaken i don't know yeah it was just one i i it was hanging up in my local uh what was it uh, uh sam ash mm -hmm. and i was just a young kid and i just looked so badass and i didn't know much about it but it, it was it was a it was an amazing guitar it, it was just a bummer because it got ripped off where we got we got like a storage unit you know broken into one time Ugh, and they took that the guitar worst. and that was like my that was actually my go-to guitar for playing live because it just sounded yeah. great it felt great yeah. It was, I didn't even really use the, Rico the was your backup, actually. The ba yeah, yeah, the Rico was my backup, but then once I only had one guitar, my Rico, then that became my main guitar, and I got so used to using it, and it, you know, it was yeah. fine, but, you know, it's, yeah, that blue ST was such a, such a nice guitar, uh, just, um, man, it was just such a bummer that the thing got ripped off, it just, it felt so good, it just, it sounded killer, I mean, yeah, great, great uh, yeah, song. Al Neck was great on that guitar. Yeah, for some reason, Alex didn't have a guitar some of the times when we <laughs> play shows together back in the day. I don't know yeah. how he would do it, but he, I would just lend him my guitar and he'd play the show. And I'm like, I think to myself, <laughs> how does this guy even practice with his band if he doesn't have a guitar? Hey, yeah. hey John, can you, can you bring that blue BC Rich with you? I need a guitar tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tour the show? I'll put you on the guest list. Yeah, fucking a. I've toured. I've toured with people like that too, and you're just like, yeah, it's the same. Like, how, how do you, how do you rehearse, dude? You have nothing. It's like, can I borrow your tube scraper? Can I borrow this? And it's like, uh, you just take the whole rig, dude. Don't worry about it. Man. Yeah, take my pay too. Here, 
But I, yeah, I was wondering about that though, that B, the BC Rich ST, because I don't see many STs around. But that was just what it was listed on the uh, on the headstock. It was, I mean, I know it was a custom, but I I've seen models similar to it, but not not exactly that. It kind of had like the, I think it had. Well, they have a. It's called a, a gunslinger. The and, gunslinger, um, yeah. That's yeah, a, and and uh, uh, John, you know Lance. Lance, he actually owns it was a guitar that was made for Andy LaRock in the, in the late eighties, and that guitar. You might have you might have even seen it before me at his studio, but uh, it's it's a red, you know, BC Rich Gunslinger from like 87, 88 or something. And that from what I understand, those guitars, Wayne Charvel was hired for a short period of time to come in because that was, you know, the era of competing with Charvel with the shredder, you know, yeah. San Dimas strats or whatever. And this fucking guitar plays exactly like a fucking 80s Charvel. Plays nothing like any BC Rich I ever played before. I fucking guitar. Like to this day, like a couple of months ago when I was at his studio, I picked it up and I was like, man, this fucking neck is just yeah. ridiculous. I have yeah. one. I have a Charvel Jackson um, Solos USA. I didn't yeah. break that one out, but I do have one of those. And it has a Kaler yeah. on it as, as the oh, hybrid. Nice. I'm and, always uh, trying to convince my guitar player to sell me his old Jackson Solos that he never uses. Yeah. And I'm still working on that. Yeah. But it's cool. It's cool. It has that old Charvel Jackson logo on it. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a it's a great plane. And that those stock pickups on there are some of the beefiest pickups. At, and I don't know what they are, but oh my god, I plugged that thing. I think in. It's just like, in a lot of them. I think mm-hmm. I've never taken them out and looked at them, but it's just so it's the beefiest guitar I own. Like literally, if I have to do another go, like ghost track on something, I'll play that guitar just to give it that. <laughs> that wall of death you know it just yeah, yeah. it's a nice. great it's a great rhythm guitar like soloing wise it's not that great but rhythm guitar wise it's it's awesome I love that's that what you want that's awesome i have a quick story about bc rich um and my ring a you know chord with you guys is that um my cousin had an old uh mockingbird new jersey series and it had those cloud inlays like steve's yeah. there and um and the longest time, and I, we grew up as kids, and he always had this saying, we're always learning, you know, songs, Metallica covers, Merciful Fate, whatever we can get our hands on, and we're just figuring out all this tab. And uh, after I moved to Florida, he went down the dark road and got into really heavy drugs, and he ended up overdosing and passing away. So I flew back up to New York uh, shortly after his death, and I was looking for the guitar. I was just like, I want the guitar that's, you know, I put many miles on that thing. And I want to remember him. And uh, no one knew where it was. And then he, I knew he used to trade it with his drug buddies. So I actually went home and kicked the door in on one of the houses, literally kicked the door in. And they were all zombied out. And I'm like, where's the fucking guitar? <laughs> and they were like, oh, but, uh, you know, I'm freaking out. And it turned out uh, they sold it to Rob Yench which was an incantation oh, yeah, right. state. And uh, so I, it took me a minute, but I got a hold of Rob and I know he collected BC Rich. He's a big, like he would be perfect for this forum I'm talking about BC Rich, but um, he, he got back to me right away. He's like, dude, if I had the guitar, I'd give it to you. And it was kind of neat because it had dice for volume knobs and I knew the guitar. It was very distinctive. He goes, oh, I sold it to the guy in Crisian. And I'm like, this guitar is going all over the fucking place. You know, I'm trying to track this thing down. So I finally got a hold of them through Facebook. And it just so happened to me at Dean, they were trying to get a Dean endorsement at the time. So I said, hey, you know, I hate to bum rush you with this, but, you know, there was this guitar you got it from Rob Yanch, blah, 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 blah. And I even had my wife trans uh, translated into Spanish because there was no Google Translate at the time. <laughs> so they had both versions of it. And he wrote me back a really nice letter just saying, hey, man, if I had a guitar, I'd, I'd give it to you. But it, it fell during the tour and the neck broke from the headstock all the way down to like the 12th fret. And he goes, I ended up taking the parts off it and trash it. And I was like, oh, I would oh, even took the I would even took the body. You know, I would just have the body and just stuck it on the wall. But yeah, every time I hear BC Rich, that story pops in my head. So I was just like, oh man, wish I had that one. 
you know. Yeah, wow, I know. Yeah, that's hard. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that guitar. I mean, I can't believe the journey that thing went on. And I think that's what's cool with all of us. We're all passionate. You know, obviously, I'm passionate about guitars, but I think the stories. I think the stories behind the guitars are just as interesting as the music that comes from them. You yeah. know, and it's just like even my strat. I mean, that thing went through. You know, I told you it went through hell. I hated it. And, you know, Rob, actually, I forgot to say one thing about this. Um, the paint job on it was done by Rob Ortel, who uh, ended up having fame with uh, Orange County Choppers, American Chopper TV show, and he used to do all the oh, choppers yeah. on there. And mm-hmm. he did that when we were like eighteen years old. <laughs> wow. So yeah, so it's a cool cool story but yeah that's what's cool about you know being a musician having all these road stories and talking about the instruments and all that stuff yeah. Man, so yeah mm-hmm. definitely agreed uh does anybody else have something that they had brought them i got one more if you want yeah, yeah. i'll make it quick yeah. all right yeah. i just want to show you this one this yeah. is uh, my, my oh, second yeah. my second custom esp um that's so, awesome that it's, is a nice, it's a nice guitar Wow. Oh, that, I, almost I think I oh, played I almost, that guitar at Tom's shop. Yeah, yeah, because Tom worked. Is that in there? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same one. So I always wanted a Koa guitar. And um, anyway, so the story is uh, we were over in Japan, and and one of the guys, one of the head guys for VSP, we were both Kiss fans, and he's like, "Let let us make you an let us make you an Iceman." And that goes back to what we were talking about just a little while ago. And I and my eyes light up. I'm like, oh, an Iceman, right? <laughs> so he's like, you, he goes, here's Nori Ishii, the, the head builder, whatever. You tell him what you want, and he'll make it happen. So it was the next night out at dinner. I sat down with Nori and started and you know started to design the guitar. And 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 he's like, oh, I remember he goes like, oh, Iceman, very difficult. And I'm like, and and of course I didn't want to offend, right? And I'm like, it's okay, you don't, you don't know. And he's like why don't we do an explorer and i'm like sure cool you know nice. so this is this is what we came up with and i go i want a koa guitar and he's like oh koa very very hard to get so they, they you can see it's got it's like a one eighth inch koa top on a, on a mahogany body maple neck i got maple on all my guitars but uh um and so anyways i got i got i got the guitar and and i the next time we were in japan after that i met up with the guy with the head guy or whatever and he's like so how did your guitar come on i said well i, I had them do this and i guess i offended him and he never fucking spoke to me again <laughs> yeah, <dude>. oh, shit. <laughs> uh, really not the true story and i don't know his position in esp it was it was i don't know if he was like one of the like the big guys uh, i i don't know but i never heard or spoke with him again because i didn't i didn't follow through with the iceman I got this instead, which oh. I'm I'm okay with. But yeah. Yeah. You remember his Let's, name? What was his name? His name was Genya, I think. I think I, when I was there, I I met some of the old timers there. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We used, and, we used to know them all at one time, but yeah, yeah. That's that's the story behind this guitar, and this guitar has traveled everywhere as well, and it's it's been very faithful to me. It's in, I can't even hit it. It's all I have to take it to Tom again. It's sat in a case for since the last time tom had it and it's all it's all it's all uh, it's 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 fucked up so it's unplayable right now but it's a really beautiful guitar i love that guitar dude yeah it's 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 and and the only other thing is we used to play this game um this is i mean you know this game where you look at it and you punch somebody it's everybody does it now but i wanted i wanted inlays of that (laughs) and what is it? I don't know. Nice. It, it looks like a it looks like a duck sticking out its tongue. But anyway, I was so happy when I got this guitar. Because awesome. you know, every every friend of mine that hadn't seen the guitar, they'd be like, "Oh, check out my new guitar," and they'd be like, "Oh," and I'd be like, "Pow!" You know, just like a nail right away. Great. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so that's that's the story on this one. That's a, it's a, wow. it's a real sharp instrument. Fucking rad, dude. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, that, I got the full, the, and I got the full, I, posi- the full, uh, full fret position markers, and they glow in the dark and shit. And uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's it. Yeah. Nice guitar. Nice. And that's my last story. Beautiful. Uh, Love it. Yeah, I'm like a little kid with glow in the dark shit, man. I am so into <laughs> glow in the dark shit. I have like glow in the dark sneakers and everything, man. <laughs> Especially <laughs> now, I can't see shit. You know, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> Got to get the loop. That stuff helps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That stuff's great. 
Yeah. I just want to go to everybody's houses and play those fucking guitars. Like I just want to oh, yeah. <laughs> look at them and, and hold them. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Danny, we're going to say that my house is going to be the uh, Armageddon Fest, the big after party. We're going to try to get as many people as we can here. So we'll oh. try to backline it. And I'll, show to- you, I'll show you how we party in Canada. Oh, dude, I'm can't <laughs> You and I are going to close the party. I promise you. <laughs> I'm going to show you one thing. A friend of mine in, in uh, Vancouver, actually in Victoria, just sent me this. Uh, fellow Kiss fans. It's a fun oh, nice. Nice. Oh, just while we're, just while we're on awesome. the Kiss discussion, I, 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 I got to show it off. Oh, it's still yeah. sitting in a box. I don't know where to put it. Wow, so, that's killer. Cool. Yeah, Super man. Cool, man. I would put it right over my bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. cool. Kiss for life. Oh, yeah. Well, that Ace Inspire, it's amazing. Kiss for man. the 70s. Ace anyway. is out right now. He's out on tour. Yeah, yeah with, the, uh, with the Coop. Uh, with Alice Cooper, right? Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Anybody else? John, did you have something else? Or Eric? Well, I got uh, this. I got no, this. I mean, you guys... I, the only other one I have here is this um, This one. Yeah. Is it, It's basically just a... This is actually just a touring guitar I got. I don't know, probably around 2010 or sure, 11 or something like that. I just wanted something I could take on tour, which is kind of a junker, but it ended up playing so nice. And I said, you know what? I, I want to like start working on guitars a little bit. So I use it as my kind of my test model. It came out so nice. I mean, it looks so yeah, it looks awesome. nice. Yeah. Actually, that's that's cool. actually a pretty it's sweet actually, looking guitar, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a cheap, uh, you know, a really cheap, um, you know, off the wall kind of bc rich um you know just it was just i think it's the um what was it rock i don't know if it was pro star rock star i can't remember what it was called but it was just one some, of the series yeah yeah mm-hmm. one of the newer series it was nothing spectacular but it actually you know i wasn't expecting much i was like well i'll just get this for some touring something i kind of beat on and not have to worry about it you know and it ended up becoming like a, a total of badass you know guitar and i use it a lot live now and it plays great it's like it, it, you know i mean obviously it's not as nice as some of my other guitars but yeah. for playing live it's sometimes nice to have one where yeah. you're not totally worried like if it's gonna be something and those, to those guitars become like yeah. the workhorse you know right yeah. definitely yeah yeah you know because there's more certain ones i just don't want to take on the road because you know, yeah it's too nice you know i mean yeah you know like you know whatever you know how it is yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so that, that's it that's it for now for me but uh especially Eric, the- i think you were next Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Eric. You were showing us something. Oh, dude. I, well, I got this one too, man. This one was the other. Oh, there we go. And this yeah. is like a matching blood splatter. Yeah, course, that's awesome, and, man. But what's fun with this one is it's got the really unique inlays on it that I've never. Yes. Seen. Oh, nice. And that's the first thing you notice. And it's actually a custom shop build that I've never had an actual one that has the fucking fancy custom shop logo. And the way I got this guitar was kind of interesting as well. Um, I had a friend of mine who, who started working at the, uh, at the Fender factory and um, he was working in the warehouse and uh, he tells me, Hey, Eric, well, maybe if I come across anything really cool, I'll let you know. And maybe we can hook you up with something. I thought, okay, great, man. Well, I mean, whatever, you know, he's working in the warehouse. One day he shoots me a picture. He's holding this guitar. He's like, Eric, look what I found in the back. Oh man. (laughs) Sitting in a box in the back. Of the warehouse at the fucking factory. And I was, and he's like, What do you think? Do you want it? And, and I'm like, Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, how much? And, um, and that was where our conversation stopped. I lost touch with my friend. And I don't know where his, where he went at that point, but I lost touch with him. And um, so I was kind of bummed because I thought, Fog, that guitar was really rad. And, um, would have been great to get but i mean whatever he he i we just kind of lost touch and i look at ebay all the time for new guitars this was like two months later all of a sudden i fucking look at ebay and here's this fucking guitar fucking on sale for 59.99 no six thousand dollars oh and i thought Fuck you, man. <laughs> what the fuck? 
and you see some of these fancy Jacksons that are selling for like six thousand fucking dollars that's, now. But that's what geez, some guitars go for, yeah. Hey no. yeah. guys, I, I gotta I gotta get going though. I'm I'm sorry, I'm mad. All right, on no worries. You know, dad likes calling. Oh, I hear you, buddy. <laughs> uh, right yeah, but thanks for having me. It was you know, I could talk to yeah, guitars all night long. Yeah, bro. man. Yeah, well, yeah, let's do it again Thank soon. You, bro. My favorite subject. It, Absolutely. All right, guys. I'll have a great time. the family, man. Out. Take care. All right. Yeah. See you, Alex. Yeah, it is fucking late. But, um, yeah, it was strange, man. I saw this guitar. It was like $6,000. And I thought, what the fuck? And so I just kind of, you know, I just watched it. And I wrote it out. And the fucking price went down and it down and down and down and down. And um, so I thought, fuck, one day I'm just going to fucking shoot this guy a low offer. And they fucking bid on it right away. So I thought, wow, "Wow, okay." So I actually got the guitar. And what was really strange when I got it, I mean, it was strange to me, was, you know, it was advertised as a brand new Jackson. And this guitar, you could just tell, had been sitting in the case for fucking years because the strings were like rusted. And this fingerboard was so dry, you looked at it and you were just like, oh my God, look at this guitar. It was so (laughs) neglected. And like I said, the strings were rusted and it had like, it had a Kaler nut on it, which if you've seen the Kaler locking nuts, they're terrible. Yeah, Yeah, Um, they're horrible. (laughs) So I had to put, uh, you know, the Kaler locking nuts actually sit behind the nut. They're these terrible things. So um, I had to get a Floyd nut put on it right away. And, um, but what was funny when I saw this guitar, you know, it was advertised as a brand new guitar. And I looked at the hang tags in the case and it was made like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So I fucking immediately shot back to the, uh, to the guy and I said, fuck dude, this isn't brand new guitar. This is a new old stock guitar. So, uh, grind me off another 500 bucks. And they fucking nice. came back like five hundred dollars. <laughs> so then I was really happy with the deal. The <laughs> and um, another thing that was really odd with it, it had a it had a booster switch on it, which I'm totally unfamiliar with. I never had a booster switch in any of my guitars, but this one had one. And um, I actually played the first fucking show. We did this gig in uh, San Francisco, the Metal Fest thing, and. I did not realize that the booster was on and I did not understand why my rig was feeding back like a bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like I didn't understand what was wrong with my gear. And it was because this little tiny switch was right here. Right on. I was so fucking pissed. I was just like, rip that fucking switch <laughs> out, man. So that's what I did. I did to a guy who fucking pulled it out and yeah and so that's the story and it's got five strings right now because you know when you break a string you just throw it on the wall and you grab another guitar and grab another guitar <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And, it's, and it's very it's been sitting there and, and actually uh, my latest piece that i got i actually went and got one of these i got one of the frames oh, oh nice. awesome uh, I, order I really one. want one of those i think so i think yeah. we i think we should all just have them you know yeah, yeah, they play. They play I mean, amazing. I was really fortunate that I grabbed it when it was only sixteen hundred bucks because yeah. now they've blown up another four hundred dollars. Yeah. And um, yeah. I've I've heard read so many horror stories about people that uh, say they go out of tune and this and that. And my fingerboard was all crappy. And well, this one came out and it looks really nice. And the fucking it stays in tune like a brick. It's my first Floyd I've ever had. And I'm amazing. Floyd guy right here. <laughs> it's in tune like a rock. The D tuna is very difficult to use. I don't know what the deal is with that, but um, you know, whatever. I just say fuck it and I added a chord or two it and I put some picks on it. And, and I love it. It's my couch guitar and I play it all the time. And it's yeah, that's awesome. that's a that's a great instrument. And like I, I think like I said, every musician should just automatically get one of those for free. Yeah. <laughs> you just all have them. <laughs> You start we're, vet- fun, we're veterans right we can we're <laughs> entitled to that right yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think we shared a shedding up blood on stages to you know go yeah, to the evh yeah. it's, made, it's a made in mexico guitar uh but it's dude the neck feels like it has that old shoe quality mm-hmm. to it it's so soft and yeah. um and it fucking the harmonics just pop and it fucking doesn't fret out and it's like 
you know, I bought it through Sweetwater, so I don't know, they're supposed to do it like a setup or whatever to look at the guitar. Maybe they did, maybe, you know, I don't know, man. It, it plays like a fucking butte though for a for what it is. Um so that's I know, killer. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. No. That's all Amazing. my stories. My drummer just picked up one of the thousand dollar one of those. Uh, it doesn't have like the relic to it, but it just mm -hmm. has the one pickup in it. Yeah. And he brought he brought it over to practice the other night, and he was just like, "Hey man, I want to hear this through your rig." You know, I'm like, "Awesome man!" And literally, I okay. sat down with that thing, and I think we did like 45 minutes of Van Halen covers. It was just yeah. like, and, and I don't know, like it's weird because I don't I know bits and pieces of Van Halen, yeah. <laughs> but I was Same. just like. I was just rocking all that out. You yeah. can't help it, man. Doing the tapping and everything. Yeah, awesome. That's pretty cool. No, they, that's those really things play cool. great, man. I, yeah. I definitely want one. You know, I, sure. had gotten, I had actually gotten one of the Sharp guitars um, when they kind of oh, first, a while yeah. ago, man. And I was really unhappy with it, man. I did not like that thing at all. There was a lot of things that I just really didn't care for. And I bounced it back, man. I just sent it back because there was the fingerboard on it was this Peo Faro fingerboard. And it was like the grippiest fingerboard. Yeah. It was yeah. like, it was really strange, man. I'd never felt anything like that. And I was like, this the fucking neck sucks. I don't know. The neck sucks. <laughs> it's down and muddy. Yeah. I played a few of those and I know what you mean. They're trying to copy like a rosewood or something. And it's like, yeah, it has a grip. Like, that's that's why I've never liked rosewood. It. Yeah, Rose yeah, is just a nap. It's very strange, man. I yeah. don't really understand. I'm an ebony guy. So. Yeah, I'm a maple guy now. Oh, are you? Uh, yeah, through and through. I got I got my last custom is is got a maple a uh, maple board on it. And I'm just like fell in love. And I'm like, why haven't I always had these? Plus, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, that's my first one, man. I always thought I was an yeah. ebony guy, man. But then I got a I got a rosewood on my PRS and um, yeah, but you know, yeah, it's killer, dude. Thank you. Thank this, you. Uh, this this show could go all night. I, I just know. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. you, you got all the guitars, Jed. No, oh, man. That's, everybody everybody just wants to talk about guitars. I mean, what what better discussion could there be? You know. You have no this one is that, this is the best one of these I've ever done. ESP <laughs> <laughs> with the with the uh, like with the jigsaw on the fingerboard. Yeah, yeah, I got that one. It's it's packed away. That that's the one oh. with the with the maple neck I was just talking about. Oh yeah, right. And it's a twenty four seven five two V. Yeah, nice guitar. Custom custom ESP. But there's I don't have, you know that one's still kind of new, and I wanted to bust out the old ones because they got the stories, you know. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah. I had the the puzzle pieces on the fretboard too, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. the same one? Yeah, same I remember one. Seeing yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a really, man. really, really nice guitar super super happy and that's you know our son is on the autism spectrum so i had the guitar made sort of in, oh, in his honor so that's, that's uh, great. take the that's boy on take the boy on tour with me in a way when when i went yeah, that's, you know, yeah, the, that's what i do with mine too yeah, yeah, yeah that's so great it's pretty cool it's got some meaning cool. super cool. it's definitely got a story yeah <laughs> I guess it does. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking road stories, and you know how many yeah, beer yeah. I spilled on it. You know, like wait, wait a sec. <laughs> yeah, the bottle caps. Those yeah. are awesome too. Yeah. yeah. John, you want to do the closing comments? What's that? Me? You want to do closing comments so we can wrap uh, this up? Okay, I wasn't prepared, but yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, it was a cool episode talking about metal and guitars and. All that kind of stuff. I had a blast. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I guess I'll just end with, you know, buy guitars. Buy guitars <laughs> from, you know, <laughs> cool companies that make them, you know. If you can, uh, you know, just um, enjoy your guitar stories. Of course, buy, you know, metal and records and CDs and all band stuff from actual either bands or independent record stores if you're going to, if you get a chance. And just, um, you know, support the underground, you know, it's a um, great thing. And um, I don't know. I don't remember what I normally say. It's been so long since I did ah. this. But uh, thank you very much. And we'll see you guys next time. And, uh, you know, like the uh, like and subscribe to, the, you know, Rock Fantasy uh, Files. And thank you, everybody, for doing this. Thank you, um, Steve, for putting on this show. And, of course, all you guys for being here. Fucking metal. Good metal. See you guys. Thank you guys. All right, man. Thank you so much. All right, man. Until next time.